It's almost game time, and you've connected to the right spot for Campbell Sports. WLAF. Since Cougar football kicked off for the very first time way back in 1975, WLAF has been there. The Cougars are on the air, and this is your front row seat to all the action. Campbell High Sports is a presentation of these outstanding WLAF corporate partners. Hi, this is Rissa at Terry's Pharmacy. The Fallout Utilities, LUB. Hi, this is Rhonda Longmire with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Hi, this is Tabitha Burris. This is Lori Johnson. This is Paige at E.E. Hill Insurance. This is Lansdon Hill with Hill Insurance. Valley Roofing, East Tennessee's leader in roofing and seamless guttering. Hi, this is President Debbie Petrie at TCAT Jacksboro. Tim Smith at TCAT Jacksboro. Go, Go Cougars. Cougars. Citizens Bank. Bank. Bank your own way. This is Matt Klein with CNL Metal, former Cougar number 42. Hey, this is Brenda Russell with Clayton Holmes Jacksboro. Hey, Campbell County Cougar sports fans, this is former Cougar number 32, Randy Heatherly. Rice Oil, your home for BP. Clarinet, flag corps of the Campbell County Marching Band. Hi, this is Amanda Brown with Cumberland Gap Medical. This is Bailey Ball. I'm back for Fall at My Supply. Hi, this is Rayma Darty at United Cumberland Bank, and we love the Cougars! Hi, this is Joey Porton at the world-famous Charlie's Pizza. This is Tracy Lobertini at Alco Builders and Realty in La Follette. Hello, it's Larry Burge at Burge Screen Printing. Go Cougars! And Lace to Pearls is just for... Girls, of course, Jim. This is Brian. Carrie. Beth. Come see us at First National Bank. Bank. Hey, this is Melinda at Powell Clinch Utilities. Go Cougars! This is Brian Leach with Grace Rehab. Hey, this is Hunter Huckabee. Come see my dad at Dole's Tire Shop. This is Mark Kane with La Follette Medical Center. This is David Reynolds, President of People's Bank of the South. This is Campbell County High School Head Football Coach Justin Price. Listen to them. Watch them. Follow them. The Cougars. Your home of the Campbell Cougars. This is WLAF. Hey, DM. My name is Les Martin. We're your Campbell County, your five and five Campbell County Cougars traveled to McMinn County to take on the eight and two McMinn County Cherokees. It's going to be one of those games as McMinn County and Campbell County has played four times. They have split those four games. They're two and two. Also, the temperature at kickoff will be 67 degrees and clear, as well as the end of the game will be clear as well and 58 by the end of the game. So weather should not be in a, a factor. Campbell County's prolific offense was grounded last week by the Oak Ridge Wildcats, so it's going to be one of those situations. Can they bounce back this week against Ming County? The Cherokees is a running offense. They run the ball, but they can also uh, strike very quickly as well. So Campbell County defense did not play very well last week. I look for them to rebound also as this young sophomore quarterback, when he gets on offense, if he's got time, he can carve him like a Christmas Day turkey. 
So with that being said, folks, we hope you stay tuned, settle in, get you some popcorn, some drinks, and enjoy the broadcast. You're listening to WLAF and the Doyle's Tire Sports Network. Hi, I am Bailey Ball from A Fall at Night Supply, and I am here with my brother Brody. See us for PPC Pot. See us for rebar. Oh, we deliver rebar, too. We carry septic chambers and septic tanks. We carry hydraulic oil and motor oil. Does anybody need a little brother? See if all of mine suffice. At First National Bank, we put you first with local lending and local decisions. Our First National Bank lenders are a part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FNB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Beavers! Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Shh. Sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal. And it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent. Not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. La Follette Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin, along with Mr. Brent Allen right here on the WLF and the Dolores Tire Sports Network. Campbell County has came to McMahon County and beat the Cherokees one time. One time. They're one and one at this stadium right here now. Campbell County has certainly got an opportunity to do it one more time to go two and one, but this is a little different than what they did during the regular season against McMinn County back in the day. This is a playoff. You lose, you go home for good. Yeah, that's that's the way it works. You know, it's one and done, and uh, they've got to get they being Campbell County has to get the last game out of their head. Forget about it. It's a brand new ball game. You know, everybody's got to come in fresh and ready to go and uh, ready to play as hard as they can go. Coach said they had a great week of practice. Of course, that when, when you have a great week of practice coming off the loss that you had against Oak Ridge, that's saying something about these kids. Yeah, it's, it's resilience. You, know, you hear college coaches, Butch Jones said it a lot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it really is. It's, resilience is important. I mean, they just have to forget about it. And uh, if they came out and worked hard and, you know, buy into the whole idea of this is a brand new season, we've got to – go out where everybody's zero zero you know and just start over then uh it really can make a big difference in the way they play mcmahon county is eight and two four and oh in the region cabell county's five and five and two and three in their region i just don't know if mcmahon county has seen an offense like what campbell county possesses yeah i don't i don't know enough about the teams i looked at the teams they played uh, throughout the year and i don't know enough about them obviously they're not in our region i don't really get to see them um but I, I doubt there's many offensive attacks that match uh, Campbell County's. When it's hot, it's hot, and it's going to be hard to stop. I know for Campbell County, young Landon Hensley has 3,023 yards, 38 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. That's a huge touchdown to interception ratio, not to mention he's leading the state in yards passing and it's just phenomenal what that young man can do when he has time, Brent. Yeah, and, and somehow he's not on the list for uh, for Mr. Football here in the state of Tennessee, which is really strange. But um, he really is exceptional. And to think that he's only a sophomore, I mean, he's really been able to put the ball right on the money. I, I mean, oftentimes when you look at the end of the, uh, the stats at the end of the game, you know, there's, uh, let's say it's 28 of 34. Well, two or three of those were just flat dropped. I sure. mean, there's no, um, there's no 
no way else to put it. Now, of course, occasionally he'll let one go a little short or a little long, but uh, he really has been very accurate. Folks, we're going to step away for a commercial break. You're listening to WLAF and the Dole's Tires Sports Network. Hi, this is Kimberly Burge here at Burge Screen Printing. We work to bring your idea to reality. We specialize in custom screen printing, direct-to-garment, full-color printing for all your apparel needs. We also do full-color printing on signs, banners, and much more. Hey, this is Larry Burge. Stop by and see us today in downtown LaFollette at 225 East Central Avenue or call 423-562-3044. 562-3044. Go Cougars! And welcome to Charlie's Pizza. We're world famous and always have been. We appreciate everybody's business. Everybody's like family to us. We appreciate you. Come on down, sis. Mmm, yum. Yeah, it's the after the game place to be. Charlie's Pizza, that is. I went to Charlie's Pizza as a teenager, and now I take my kids. You can count on seeing me and Logan and Seth down there after about every game. My favorite part of Charlie's Pizza is the special. Yep, same old Charlie's Pizza. I love Charlie's Pizza. It's very delicious. The world famous Charlie's Pizza. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423-201-9799. Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stop Lot 10 on East Central at Cumberland Avenue. All right, fans, it's here. We're in the postseason. We're on the road to Athens, Tennessee to battle McMinn County. McMinn County is 8-2 and and the number one seed in their region. But when you look at their schedule, they may be 8-2, and but every other team in that region has a losing record, including the four seed from that region, Ray County, who has only won two games all year. That doesn't mean McMinn County is bad, but it means that they are not battle tested compared to Campbell County. Campbell County has played some top teams. Powell's the defending state champion. Oak Ridge is just exactly that, they're Oak Ridge. So we have a very good chance of going to McMinn County coming home with a win. If we do that, it is only our second advancement in the playoffs in the history of the school. We last went to the second round in 2014. This Cougar team is absolutely stacked with offensive firepower. Jamal Wright is back, which aids our linebacker core. This is a hungry team. Can the Cougars advance as a four seed? They absolutely can. My prediction right here, we go to the second round. Fans, I thank you for listening to this, which I predict is not my last patch place of the season, and we'll see you at the ball game. This is Lysta Pearls for Girls in downtown La Folle, and this is Jennifer. We're here to serve. We would love to be your personal shopper. We have ladies' collection of clothing in here, along with little girls' collection. So let us shop for you. Come and see us Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays in downtown La Follette. This is Skeeter with Doyle's Tire Shop. We've been in the same spot since the 1990s. We continue serving you with the same friendly service and top-notch name brand tires as my dad, Doyle, did when he first opened up. Whether you're a contractor or you're just handling a project around the house or farm, CNO Metal Sales has the best prices in the tri-state. Metal roofing custom cuts as well as delivery are available from CNL Metal. Be sure and ask us about our lifetime warranty on metal. Matt Klein can handle your big or small jobs from one piece of metal to a hundred. Select from 22 colors. CNO Metal Sales is right behind O'Reilly's Auto Parts in Middlesbrough. Just take a left at the first stoplight and CNL is on the right. See or call Matt at 606-248-57. This is Matthew Klein, 
former Cougar number 42. Come see me at CNL Metal. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. Grace Rehab is the only one that has a pool. It has really helped all of us that have been coming for quite a while. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. You work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. You're listening to WLAF and the Doors Tire Sports Network. Campbell County, 5-5, five 2-3 and five, two and three in the region. McMinn County, 8-2, 4-0 and two, four and oh in the region. Don't let the numbers confuse you or upset you. McMinn County can be beat here tonight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody in the region uh, has a losing record. Yeah, and that's that's kind of strange, but <laughs> yeah, they, I noticed that myself. Uh, they didn't play a whole lot of competition, and we don't really know what kind of ball they play. Um, I mean, they, we've been told that they're a running team, but uh, we'll see. Something to keep an eye on tonight. Both of their offensive tackles are, are freshmen. Um, that could be something that, that could uh, could make a big difference if uh, if our defensive ends can, can get through them. Yeah, it, it's a situation to where they're pretty good sized boys uh, on McMinn County's offensive line, but ours is just a little bit smaller and probably a whole lot quicker. Yeah, the guys on the out depends on who we uh, sure. who we trot out there, but uh, the interior line will have a big a big uh, size uh, big size factor. We're actually quite a bit bigger than them on the inside, and uh, on both sides of the line, generally speaking, again with the big guys, we're we're a little bigger. That doesn't always mean anything. I mean, obviously, athleticism goes a long ways, especially in high school. Well, folks, it's one of those situations. It's either win and move on to the next round or lose and go home. It's going to be a situation to where McMinn County and Campbell County, they're two and two in this matchup between the these two schools. Bo Cagle is the head coach for McMinn County. He's never coached against Campbell County. Uh, he is 103 and 69, and, of course, everybody knows Justin Price and Coach Matt Price. They're one of those situations to where it's either all or nothing for those young men. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, should be a good matchup. Again, you know, we've we've watched them warming up. They've definitely got some good-looking athletes. The kickers looks like he's putting it into the end zone on a regular basis, and that always causes some problems. Gives us a doesn't give us the opportunity to get very good field position. But we'll see how it goes. They may kick them short tonight. We don't know. Folks, you're listening to WLAF and the Dole's Tires Sports Network. There are two types of hot water heaters, thankless and tankless. The thankless kind work like this. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. Hold off on that. I'm hopping in the shower. Renai tankless water heaters work this way. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. No problem. You get an endless supply of hot water even for multiple tasks at the same time. With a natural gas water heater from PCUD, you get hot water twice as fast as same size electric and for about half the cost. Chop down your hot water energy cost hundreds of dollars a year with PCUD in La Follette or Rocky Top. Renai Tankless Water Heaters, the hot way to heat water. Quality and Clayton go hand in hand. That's quality constructed homes from Clayton Homes. The staff at Clayton Homes, located right here at home in Campbell County at Jacksboro, is ready to help you through all the steps of home ownership, from selecting the home that's just right for you to putting the keys in your hand. Since 1956, Clayton Homes has been making dreams come true. See the home folks about your new dream home from Clayton Homes, 110 North Street near Jacksboro middle school call or just come on by bp is back rice oil has brought back bp to big o's get and go and cumberland crossing bp bp provides the energy that keeps campbell county and america moving and helps drive the u.s economy 
Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco from Rice Oil, La Follette. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in the surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing. 423-566-6561. It's the postseason. Campbell here at Athens tonight to take on the McMinn County Cherokees. Jim Freeman with head coach Justin Price and coach well, it's gotten here fast, has it? The postseason already. Yeah, it has. You know, I've, you know, you, f you feel like you can say it every year. It goes by fast, but it, it's been a fun season, a regular season, some very entertaining games, some some close wins, some close losses, and uh, you know, some nights we were at our best, some nights we weren't. But you know, also when you get in the playoffs, that you kind of put all that stuff behind you, and hopefully, hopefully, you're playing at your your best right now. How's the team uh, voc focused, readjusted this week mentally and emotionally preparing for this game? The second season, it's basically a clean – it is a clean slate for you. Yeah, you know, obviously last Friday night against Oak Ridge wasn't our best performance, uh, you know, even from the start. We just – you know, four, down 14 nothing before we ever took a snap on offense. Uh, but I think the, the thing about playing like that week 11, there is no other option than just to move on. You know, if you, you play like that early in the season or midway through the season, you know, it may – you know, stick with you a little bit longer. But this, you know, in this situation where you're already in the play, you're in the playoffs, you know, you, you you feel like you have to put all that behind you because you know, it, like you're saying, it's a clean slate for everybody. And so, you know, we've had a great week of con uh, practice, and I, and I feel like the key for us. And I told our players after the game last Friday was don't let one game take away the confidence that we've built up to that point. You know, I felt like we had a great week of practice heading into Courage. Mm -hmm. We were playing with a lot of confidence. Um, so we can't let that one game take that away from us. We just need to carry on, on to this week. It is the postseason, uh, game one against McMinn County. This is the uh, the fifth time these two teams have played, dating way back <laughs> in the 70s. Uh, each is one on each other's home field. That doesn't matter now. This is the first postseason game for you two. And, and being on the road, how, how different is that? Uh, it's a pretty good haul from here to Athens. Yeah, it is. You know, I think uh, anytime you you go on the road, you just you gotta ha kind of have that business approach, and mm -hmm. at the same time, you want to enjoy it. You know, we'll get a couple of charter buses and eat at Cracker Barrel on the way down, and you know, so I think that you know you want you want this experience to be something our players enjoy. I mean, to make the playoffs is a big deal. Uh, you know, it's something that you know you have to earn that, and and our players have put ourselves we've put ourselves in a position. Our players have to. To be in this spot and so let, let's make the most of it let's enjoy it but at the same time let's stay focused to, that to control what we can control to lock in whatever our responsibilities are and, and play our best football game with regard to uh, the, the postseason and the business -like, business like approach uh your team is is fairly healthy would you say yeah, you know, I think obviously football's, you know, you, injuries are part of the game. Uh, I think the key thing is every week is, you know, who, whoever's on the field, make sure that you're prepared and that you've prepared all week to play with confidence, to play, to play fast. You know, whatever that's, you know, that doesn't mean you have to run a four five forty or four two forty, but play up to your potential on every snap. And uh, you know, so I, I feel confident we'll be able to do that. What can you tell us about McMinn County? You've obviously seen film. This is a team that's eight and two, finished four and zero, top of the the region three stand, region four standings. So, uh, what do you know about them so far? Well, I think when you watch them on film, they they're a very disciplined football team. That I means that speaks to their coaches. Coaches, you know, they're disciplined. You can tell, especially defensively, they're very simple on defense. You know, they kind of give you one look, uh, and basically they play that very well. And uh, you know, so I think that's going to be uh, that's one thing that stands out. Then offensively, they got a, a quarterback and a running back that are uh, both of them are seniors, and uh, you know, they they have the ability to make some big plays and uh, up front their physical offensive line. So I think that's the number one thing is they're just a physical program, I think, when you watch them on film uh, and well coached. Um, and so I, I think, you know, you, you can you, they're 8-2 for a reason. Uh, they got good players, good coaches, and, and so it'll be a challenge. 
Uh, your team, the Campbell County Cougars, offensively, you'll take what they'll give you tonight. Uh, what do you think they may give you? Well, you know, I think the, the again the uh, the matchup is going to be our receivers against their secondary. Uh, you know, I, when you look at our team, that's kind of been our strength offensively, uh, and and that's what we're going to go into this game and 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 try to do play our best in the passing game. Then if they give us the give us a box where we need to run it, let's be able to do that. But I, I think us is how do they match up with with Devin and Shanks and Miller and Ferguson? Uh, you know, because each one of them have a different skill set. And so we'll try to find matchups that are favorable to us, and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be able to take advantage of those matchups. And then, you know, one thing that I've seen with them is we're going to take our shots in the field, which we've done more this year than probably in the past. I feel like, uh, but also take the underneath throws, and and that's one thing I think that watching them on film, I thought they're kind of that defense that want they want to try to keep some things in front of them. And if they do that, especially at linebacker, you know, if we can hit some drags or get some things underneath and turn those into big plays will be key for us. Defensively, uh, how do the matchups come out there for you? Well, again, I think they're a physical lot. They like to run the football. Uh, they run their quarterback some. So we just got to make sure that we're where we need to be, uh, you know, and play with technique. Uh, and I think with our defense, and we kind of talked a little, about, a little bit about it last week, is try to create negative plays, force them in some third and longs, uh, maybe force them into doing some things they do not want to do, and then, uh, you know, try to find a way to create negative plays and, and get some turnovers. I think that's in a game like this, playoffs, you know, each possession is going to be big. So if you can find a way to create a turnover, it's going to be huge. Coach, uh, we wish you well tonight. Hope you'll have fun, and uh, we'll see you after the game. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Thank you, Head Coach Dustin Price and his Cougars taking on the Cherokees here in Athens, McMinn County, and Campbell coming up in just a little bit on the WLAF Tholes Tire Shop Sports Network. Citizens Bank is a locally owned and operated bank serving communities in East Tennessee. The bank was established in 1934 with three guiding principles at its foundation. Assurance of safety to depositors, a high standard of service to customers, and a genuine desire to serve the community. These principles are the core factor in the success that has lasted over 85 years and grown Citizens Bank to the renowned financial institution it is today. To learn more about Citizens Bank, visit CitizensBank24.com. I'm Tracy Lobertini with Alco Builders and Realty. Take a look at what we have for you today. Thank you, Tracy. This one-level home, located at 322 Pinecrest Road, offers three large bedrooms, two full baths, and an office-slash-sleeping room. Updated and move-in ready, it offers recessed lighting, shaker cabinets, stainless steel appliances, gas stove, and tile floors. The primary bedroom is large with vaulted ceilings and has an in-suite bath attached. The bathroom has a large walk-in closet, a soaking tub, and a walk-in tile shower. The exterior has a long covered porch to take in the beautiful views. This home is currently priced at $159.9. If you're looking to buy or to sell, my name's Tracy Lobertini, 423-562-0638. Just give me a call. Hello Cougar fans, I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. Gray Insurance is your local independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. The folks at Hensley Tire and Service welcome you by their new location at the corner of Beach and Indiana Avenue in La Follette. Hensley's Tire and Service provides road service going to customers stuck on the highway somewhere with tire or engine trouble. Servicing tractor trailer trucks is another service offered along with mechanical work, alignment, and lifts. 423-563-TIRE. That's 563-8473. Terry's Pharmacy delivers. Whether it's at their drive throughs at the curbside, or at your doorstep, Terry's is delivering countywide. Don't want to get out of the house? Terry's will safely deliver to your door. Anxious about your pharmacy not having a drive through Terry's will seamlessly help you transfer your prescriptions so you can drive through at one of Terry's convenient locations, La Follette and Jacksboro. At the drive throughs drop off your prescription and wait in the parking lot for your phone call when it's ready. Have a question? Want to transfer your prescription? Just call Terry's, 423-5. 562-4928. 562-4928. No matter where you are in Campbell County, you're liable to see us on deliveries. Just honk and wave.
Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. Here comes the Campbell County Cougars. The captains for Campbell County Cougars is coming on the field as well as the Campbell County Cougars on the far end zone to our right. It's going to be a situation, I think, that we're going to surprise this McMinn County team. And I really feel that after having a, a listen to Coach's interview and just being in that situation, I think he really has these kids ready to go. I think they're, they've are they never been ready as much like they're ready tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what you hope for. And, uh, of course, as usual, he will try to get the ball first, and uh, hopefully we can get the ball first and go down and score quick and just take the crowd out of it immediately and, and just do our thing after that. I know that when they win the toss, they always take the football first, Campbell County, that is. Justin Price, Coach Price, loves to put the pressure on the opposing uh, team and as well as he should. Right. I agree, and uh, it, it's definitely worked several times. I mean, the, the actual idea has worked. You've seen lose, uh, losing air, basically, when, when we just go down the, down the field and score on the first – on the first series, and uh, it's definitely it's definitely worth it if you can make it happen. Well, let's talk about the cornerbacks for McMinn County. We've got a couple of shorter guys in the secondary. That kind of plays into a favor for Campbell County, do you think? It does, but, uh, I mean, one of them's quite a bit shorter than, than you would imagine. Um, and, of course, if, if he's up against anybody other than Ferguson, they're going to have a – he's going to have – a hard time dealing with him but he looks very athletic and i'm sure they've got him out there for a reason i'm sure he can jump he looks quick um, it's just a matter of can we get the ball placed in the right position and take advantage of that coach i mean folks we're going to step away for a short commercial break you're listening to wlaf and the Dole's tires sports network at United Cumberland Bank, our number one focus is people. You see, our employees are our largest shareholders, and they are dedicated to ensure your financial success. And one of the biggest financial decisions you can make is a home loan, and we will help every step of the way. Buying a home is a huge decision, so is choosing the right lender. Find out more at unitedcumberland.com. United Cumberland Bank, generations of trust, neighbors you know. Member FDIC and equal housing lender, all loans subject to credit approval. Hi, I am Bailey Ball from A Fall and Lots of Play, and I am here with my brother Brody. See us for PPC Pot. See us for rebar. Oh, we deliver rebar too. We carry septic chambers and septic tanks. We carry hydraulic oil and motor oil. Does anybody need a little brother? See if all a monsify. At First National Bank, we put you first with local lending and local decisions. Our First National Bank lenders are a part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FNB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Cougars! La Follette Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. Off, yeah. Welcome back to <laughs> Cherokee Stadium, folks. As Campbell County won the toss, they will elect to receive on the right-hand side of the field. As you're looking at your television, it will be the right side of your television, right side of your radio. It's going to be a situation to where Coach Justin Price, like we just discussed, wants to take the ball first, go down the field, have an efficient drive, and put points on the board while at the same time his defense puts a little bit of pressure on the offense for McMinn County. Yeah, it's all about setting the tone, um, finding out what they're going to do defensively. That gives him more time to, you know, be ready for the next uh, for the next series. It's just a smart way to go, especially in a in, with a team that's like a high-powered offense, I guess you'd say. It looks like Peyton Ferguson is deep along with Owens. Owens, Owens as well back there. 
So to kick off for McMinn County will be Spencer Sullins. He is the place kicker and the uh, the punter and the kicker, and he has got a boot on him. He sure does. So back deep is Ferguson and Owens. They're back standing at the five-yard line on the right side. So McMinn County will be kicking off from our left to our right. The Cherokees will be on defense first, pending that everything goes to as planned. Here's the kick. It's a high end over end kick. Comes down to Owens inside the five, up to the 10, up to the 15. Runs over a couple, gets all the way up to the 20-yard line where it will be first down in 10, Campbell County. There's a couple of tacklers, and one of them that lead the way was Roush. Roush in on the tackle for the Cherokees. The Cougar has the football as they will be dressed in all white, and the Cherokees will be dressed in all black with yellow numerals. First down in 10, Campbell County. Shotgun formation for Hensley. Three receivers to this near side. Two receivers to the far side. It looks like, like Brent said, Campbell County has the upper hand on size. Here's the snap. Good snap. Passes away. Pass complete up to the 20, 25. That is Devin Jones up to the 27-yard line. Tackled there by a couple of Cherokees to lead the way was Faulkner. Faulkner gets up after getting hit by Devin Jones as Jones picks up seven yards and it's going to be second down and three for your Cougars traveling from our right to our left. Empty backfield once again. There's a penalty flag. It's going to be offsides against the Cherokees that will move the football five yards closer to the goal line. And we've got about 72 <laughs> yards to go. Yeah, it's still closer to the goal line. I it mean, is. That's a little misleading, but it is true. It is going to be false start. So it's five yards back now. I've never seen that all season as mm -hmm. Campbell County will come up out of their stance before the set signal, look to the sideline for the play, and there's a penalty flag. As Campbell County now will get to play in to Landon Hensley's. There's three receivers to the far side, two receivers to this near side. It looks like it's Lester and Miller to this near side. Passes away, passes completely, mm. drops it at the last minute, was intended for Ferguson. He had plenty of room in front of him. So it will be third down and eight yards to go for a first down for your Cougars. Yeah, you like to have that one back. I'm sure uh, Ferguson's not pleased with himself. Just a little early game jitters, maybe. We have got a ton of information for you throughout the game, folks. I've just got to do a better job bringing you the info information <laughs> to you. We're working on Hensley's tire first down. Three receivers to the far side, two receivers to this near side. So far, the rush has not gotten to this young quarterback as he's gotten the ball away extremely quick. Now is a stoppage on the play. It's going to be timeout. Campbell uh, County will take it with them. Yeah, Folks will step away for a commercial break. You'll listen to WLAF and the Dole's Tire Sports Network. Gears to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Shh. Sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal. And it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent, not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. There's no score. There's 10.59 left to go in this first quarter. Campbell County won the toss, elected to receive. Had it second down and three, but got caught on a false start. Backed them up five yards. It's now third down and eight. Two receivers near side, three receivers to the far side for your Cougars. We've got Will Lester to this near side along with Miller. Also to the far side, we have Devin Jones, Mason Shanks, and Peyton Ferguson. Calling out the signals is Hensley's, takes the snap, looking, passes away, 
It's behind the would-be receiver. It's going to bring up a fourth down. It was intended for Devin Jones. And it was broke up at the last minute by Fegans. So it's going to be fourth down and eight. Let's see if they punt or go for it. Probably will punt as now he has Mason Shanks Back deep to punt, standing at his 10-yard line. We've got Peyton Ferguson to this near side. Calling out the signals, 12 seconds. Here's the snap, good snap, punts away, good punt, good punt. It's gonna be tackled and forced out of bounds there by Ferguson at the 43-yard line of the Cherokees. So it's one of those situations Kind of misfumbled a little bit, had to call a timeout, an early timeout, but uh, let's see what this call will be here as we've got a, Is there a false play? start huh. against Campbell County once again. They're going to find out if they want to repunt or just play the ball. They're going to decline it, and they're going to take the ball at the 43-yard line. So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Cherokees. That's two false starts. I'm, uh, that's concerning to me, and I, I'm, it's not on the kids, it's not on the coaches, right. but what it is on is the officials, and the reason why I say that is simply because we had very, very, very few false start penalties during the season. Now, if this crew, this officiating crew, does not understand how they get the signals into this team, that's concerning. Yeah, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> Shotgun formation for the Ke Cherokees. Quarterback keeper right up the middle. He's up there at the 45 to the 46-yard line, and he'll be tackled there by Jamal Wright, Johnson, and Lester. <laughs> Got to get them all in there. That's you know? it. There's nothing wrong with that. That was Hester on the carry for McMinn County. It's going to bring up a second down and six. It's two receivers far side, single receiver to this near side. I form or a pistol formation. Now he will slide out of it. Here's the quarterback keeper one more time to this near side. He's going to run out of bounds at the 44 yard line of Campbell County as Jaden Miller was a the decoy for the Cherokees. And on the tackle was Jamal Wright. That's going to be first down for the Cherokees inside Campbell County ter Territory as Hester shotgun formation. Two receivers far side, single receiver to this near side. Has been two quarterback runs. Here's the snap coming to this near side. Down to the 40, runs out of bounds there. Jamal Wright was there to make sure he didn't go any further. As in on the carry was Miller for the Cherokees and that's gonna bring up a second down and five yards to go for the Cherokees traveling from our left to our right. That looked like a replay of last down. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So now it's shotgun formation once again for Hester Miller directly behind him, single receiver to this near side. Two receivers far side, it's gonna be a pass, pass is complete and he's gonna be tackled there by Mason Shanks. And it's Hensley is in on the reception and we have a timeout on the field. Let's see what this will be. As he's gonna call one receiver out for the Cherokees and now they'll have a, another one come in for yeah. the Cherokees. I don't know exactly if it was a uniform issue or what, but the referee seen it and took care of the situation. Shotgun formation for Hester, Miller to the right, three receivers near side, single receiver to the far side. Here's the snap, handoff to Miller, Miller to the far side, just cuts it back, and he's gonna be tackled there. As there's a penalty flag on the play, in on the tackle was Jamal Wright. There's a penalty flag on the play, looks like some extracurricular activity after the play. Let's see who this is going to go against. It's going to be a dead ball personal foul against Campbell County. That's absurd. I don't understand it. It looked like that the Cherokee, uh, the Cherokee pushed our guy, and that's when they threw the flag. So I don't know what. I don't know what they seen. And that's all I seen. Yeah, I didn't see any of it. 
9.26 left to go in this first quarter. There's no score. The Cherokees has the football at the nine-yard line of Campbell County. Hester, shotgun formation. Miller in motion. Passes away. Passes complete. Touchdown. It was a quick slant to Hensley. It's going to be touchdown for McMinn County. And it's going to be 6 to nothing Cherokees over Campbell County early in this first quarter. There's 9-11 left. Yeah, ran right by our cornerback. I don't know what, what he was thinking, but he just went right by him. In to kick the extra point is Sullins. To hold is Hester. Calling out the signals is Hester. Here's the snap, low snap, kick is up. Looks like it's good from this distance, and it's good. The score, Cherokee 7, the Cougars 0. You're listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tires Sports Network. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name's Les Martin along with Mr. Brent Allen. We have Troy Arnold on the camera. We got Matthew Moore at the controls here on site. And we have Nika Ward back at home base bringing you all the action. Yeah, former Cougar Troy Arnold. Yes, <laughs> former Cougar Troy Arnold. In to kick off is Sullins. Back deep is Owens and Ferguson. The ball is placed at the 40-yard line. There's 9-11 left to go in this first quarter. The score... The Cherokee 7, Campbell County 0. Here's the kick. High, end over end. Comes down to Ferguson. Up to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Breaks it over across the 20, down to the 25. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Cougars. Traveling from our right to our left. As it looks like it was Thompson in on the tackle for the Cherokees. So now it's going to be shotgun formation as Campbell County is tight formation. Now we'll spread it out as always. We've got four receivers coming to this near side. Miller, the lone receiver to the far side. Let's see what Campbell County has got in store for the Cherokees right here real quick. 9.05 left to go in the first quarter to score Cherokee 7, Campbell County 0. Here's the snap. Looking. Passes away. It's going to be complete to Miller. Miller could not get away. Maybe loses a couple yards. And it's going to bring up a second down and 12 as they was all over that one. Yeah, it looked like he had that, had that figured out from the get-go. Melton in on the tackle. And it's going, it's going to be second down and 12 yards to go for a first down for Campbell County. We certainly, we've got time to pass. Now it's time that we just... Uh, make things happen here. I, I agree that was a missed assignment on that last one um it was a one-on-one -on -one situation and generally and miller would have beaten the kid that had him covered but somebody missed the other guy and uh, that's what happens shotgun formation two receivers near side two receivers to the far side lester in the backfield calling out the signals they have four down linemen Cher the cherokees do passes away it's complete to let's go with lester lester let's up go to the 40. Runs Ooh. over one. That's a Jacksboro body shop collision if I've ever seen one, folks. Beautiful. Jacksboro body shop collision, folks. I'm telling you. And guess who took the brunt of it? Was Faulkner. Jacksboro body shop was founded in 1960 by the former Jacksboro Eagle football star, the late Harry Burton. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. When you have a collision, call on Avery and Don Burton at Jacksboro body shop. They'll take care of all your collision needs. That was a huge hit. That was beautiful. That was also a Hensley's Tire first down. Two locations to serve you. One in Huntsville, one in La Follette. Shotgun formation. Lester in the backfield now in motion to this near side. Looking passes away. It's over the head of Jones. And it's intercepted. And it's going to be a first and ten at the 48-yard line of the Cherokees. Cherokee has a football. 
That ball just sailed on the young quarterback. I don't know if he's seen Shanks or if he was trying to throw it to Jones because it was yeah. over the head of both. Yeah. I don't know what happened there, but uh, they're going to have to tighten up or this is going to be a long night. It's going to be first down and 10. They marked the football at the 49-yard line of the Cherokees, traveling from our left to our right with 7.28 left to go in this first quarter. Shotgun formation for Hester. In motion is Miller. It's going to be Hester keep, and he's going to get up to the Hold 50. Down, and no, he gets no further. Maybe a yard, maybe, is Johnson in on the tackle. And that's going to be a pickup of one. So it's going to be second down and nine. That's much better defensive coverage on the quarterback. I agree. So it's going to be second and nine for the Cherokees traveling from our left to our right. Two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Miller in the backfield for the Cherokees. Hester shotgun formation. Calling out the signals in motion now as Hensley comes back into the backfield. It's going to be a handoff to this near side as he's going to run out of bounds there by Johnson. And he's going to be a pickup of three, four yards. And that's going to bring up a third down and five. Yeah, nice job by Storm Webb, uh, Muncie. They were out there spreading them out and uh, stretching that play out where he had nowhere to go. Third and five, and I love hearing the band play across the way. Me too. So now it's going to be a third and five for the Cherokees. Well, we got to watch the ball here, you know. And I know it's only third down, but <laughs> we still need to watch smart. the ball. Yeah. Calling out the signals is Hester in the backfield is Miller. Single receiver to this near side, three to the far side. In motion now is Miller. It's going to be a pass. He has no place to go. He releases uh -oh. the football, and he drops the football. It's going to bring up fourth down and five for the Cherokees. Yeah, we just got lucky on that one. He was wide open. It looked like that he was lost in the secondary and no one was nowhere around him like he was on his own zip code. <laughs> yeah, originally they were well covered, but he somehow broke free. Looked like we had a little bit of pressure there on the quarterback, and that was good to see. So it's going to be fourth down and five. The Cherokees will go for it. Single receiver near side, three, two receivers far side, one in the backfield. Now we've got to really watch that ball. Yes, we do. Un shotgun formation for Hester. Here's the snap. It's going to be run to this side, and he's going to be – Tackled short of the first down. He's short of the first down as it looked like it was Jones, Mikey Albright, and Peyton Ferguson. Peyton Ferguson was the one who made sure he get, went no further. So that's a turnover on downs. First down to go for Campbell County, and they've got good field possession. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's one of the one of the first good things that's happened so far other than, uh, than Will Lester's nice run there. And nice hit. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that was a nice one. The ball's placed at the 43-yard line of the Campbell County Cougars. We've got two receivers to this near side. Looks like Shanks and Ferguson. Two receivers to the far side, Miller and Jones. In the backfield is Owens. Hensley. Owens is to the left of Hensley. Calling out the signals. Here's the snap. Looking pass is complete to Ferguson. Ferguson's got some blocks. Mm. He gets up to the 50-yard line. All the way up into Cherokee territory. And he's close to a first down, just a little short. And it looks like it was Melton in on the tackle. And now let's see what the referee says. They're going to have a measurement as a referee time out. We'll take it with them, folks, as they got to come all the way across the field. We'll take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to WLAF and the Dole's Tires Sports Network. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423 -201 Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stoplight 10 on East Central at Cumberland Avenue. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. 
you made a comment during break that if that kid hadn't held his arm, he'd have been gone. Yep, yeah, he's a fast guy. Had a nice crease there, just uh, couldn't quite get away from the defender. All right, we've got two receivers near side, two receivers to the far side. It's first down and 10, a Hensley's tire first down, two locations to serve you. One in Huntsville, one in La Follette. Hensley shotgun formation, empty backfield, calling out the signals. Here's a snap, steps up, passes off the fingertips. He looked. Mm -hmm. Ferguson was looking to run before he caught the football. He's got to make sure he secures the football first. I agree. You know, he's, he's had, some, had some incredibly big plays this year. And sure. He's, he's licking his chops, looking forward to another one. Probably would have had one there if he had just uh, maintained the ball. Yeah. And – I'm telling you, folks, these kids are excellent. They're fantastic, and we don't want you to think we're giving them a black <laughs> eye or saying anything bad about them, but we know the potential of this team. Absolutely. And you do as well as fans, and that's what we like about bringing the broadcast to you. Three receivers, far side, single receiver near side, second down and 10. Here's the snap. Rolling to the far side, looking, passes away, passes complete to Shanks. Shanks just going to lower his shoulder and get over across the – 45 down inside the 45 to the 43, and it's going to bring up a third down and six yards to go. In on the tackle was Evans for the Cherokees, and it's going to bring up third and six for Campbell County. That was good effort by Shanks there. He didn't really have much. He just had to power through a couple of them. He did as well. As Campbell County looks like they're wanting to take the fight to the dog instead of letting the dog come to their mm -hmm bring the fight to them so three receivers near side two receivers to the far side there's been no pressure on Hensley so far certainly hope I don't jinx that <laughs> but so far they've been doing a good job with getting rid of the football here's the snap it's going to be a quarterback draw right up the middle to the 40 across the 40 to the 39 travels Hensley and it's going to be a fourth down and two in on the tackle was Melton and it's going to be a Fourth down and two. Campbell County looks like they may go for it. Yeah. Um, I like seeing Lester in the backfield here. Fourth yep. Fourth down and two. I agree with you, Brent. Three receivers near side. Single receiver to the far side. We've got Miller, far side, Jones, Shanks, and Ferguson to this inside. Oh, excuse me, to this near side. Getting a play in with eight seconds, seven seconds on the play clock. Calling out the signals. Here's a snap. It's going to be quarterback draw one more time. Oh, As yeah. he's pushing his way, he's got a first down. He gave him a good mark because that's where he got to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Hensley's tire first down for Campbell County's Montgomery in on the tackle for the Cherokees. So it's going to be first and ten. Now we've got a... Sideline warning against the Cherokees. And let's see, it's going to be first down and 10 for Campbell County. And Hensley's tire first down. Folks, make sure you stay tuned to the TCAT Cougar Wrap-Up Show brought to you by your friends at Tennessee College of Applied Technology. Roll that clock. There's 43 seconds, excuse me, 4 minutes and 34 seconds in this first quarter. The score is... Cherokee 7, Campbell County 0, Campbell County's driving. Empty backfield, four receivers to this near side. Here's the snap, looking, passes away. Pass is going to be complete Ooh. for Shanks. He takes a hit, but he jumps up, ready to go. Oh, yeah, it didn't affect him at all. No, it didn't. Faulkner in on the tackle. That's going to be a pickup of six yards, going to bring up second down and four. As the... Defense looks like they're keeping the receivers in front of them. Yeah, that's a, that's a good plan. Um, we've got to do a better job so that uh, they're not. <laughs> that's the reason why they're going to the underneath game early in this football game is probably uh, that's what I would take. I would yeah. take what the defense has given us and then maybe loosen them up and then go deep. Shotgun formation. Here's the snap. Looking. Here we go. Pass out into the flat. Complete to Ferguson. Ferguson up the sideline. Gets enough for a first down. They're going to tag him out at the 18-yard line, and that's going to be Hensley's tire first down. Two locations to serve you, Huntsville and LaFollette. Folks, also I want to make sure that, that, to bring you up the information on collectibles and more features wall-to-wall -wall fun. 
Campbell County quickly back to the line of scrimmage will now take their time. Hasbro action figures, board games, gaming cards like Magic and Pokemon, special orders for Christmas. Place your order now. Layaway for Christmas is coming soon, folks. It's a great place. I've been in there and spent a little bit of money, on, and I can't go back. Here's the snap. Here comes some pressure. Passes away. It's going to be complete to Jones. Jones runs to the far side. Just now going to turn it up at the 20-yard line. And he's going to lose two yards as in a situation like that, as Evans makes the tackle. In a situation like that, Brent, you just cut your losses and turn it up. Yeah, yeah. and for the record, that was Jones on the last reception. And uh, um, it looks like he's trying to get warmed up. Yes, let's certainly hope so. Let's hope so Ferguson and Miller and all these guys get warmed up. Shotgun formation, once again, that was the first time that Campbell County had uh, had to deal with pressure or Landon Hensley had to deal with some pressure from the defensive line. Here's the snap. Pass is away. It's going to fall incomplete intended for Jones as it's going to be third down and 12 for Campbell County. Defensive line is doing a good job of just getting a good push. They're not really getting a lot of pressure, but they're also getting their hands up, and it seems to be affecting. Looked like he was trying to throw around some hands there. So now it's going to be third and 12 for Campbell County, traveling from our right to our left. We've got to pick up some yards here. I certainly hope I ain't in your way. Not at all. Three receivers, four receivers to this near side, single receiver to the far side. Shotgun formation, 2.49 left to go in the first quarter. The score, the Cherokee 7, the Cougar 0. Here's the snap. Third down, passes away. Falls incomplete. Almost intercepted, but falls incomplete. And it's going to bring up a fourth and 12. And there's trash talking. There's a penalty flag on the play. Let's see what this will be. They're pointing towards, <laughs> let's see who's got the flag here this time, if it's on Campbell County. Unsportsmanlike conduct, it's on Campbell County and Cherokee, McMinn County, so it's gonna be offset penalties, so penalties against both teams be it's gonna be fourth and, 12. fourth and 12. Fourth down and 12 for Campbell County, traveling from our right to our left. Campbell County's yet to get on the board. There's 2.45 left to go in this first quarter. Shotgun formation, three receivers near sides, two receivers to the far side. As they're, they have five seconds on the play clock, got it to play in. Here's the snap, looking, feeling some pressure. Pass is away. Pass is going to be incomplete, but there's a go. penalty flag on the play. Looks like it was pass interference on... Cherokee on the Cherokees, but we'll wait and see what this call will be. It better be. <laughs> Looked like he tried to tackle him. Yeah. He may have just been falling down, but he certainly tried to do something on the way down. Yes, he did. It's going to be pass interference, McMinn County, and that's going to bring up fourth down and two, if I'm not mistaken. We'll find out if it's a 15 or a 10-yard penalty. It's going to be a 10-yard penalty, and it's going to be fourth down. I don't know how it's 10 yards, and it's fourth and four. When it was fourth and 12, it should be fourth and two. Mm -hmm. So now Campbell County quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers to this near side, two receivers to the far side. Gets the play in from the sideline with... 17 seconds on the play clock and counting down. They're just going to take their time. There's 2.41 left to go in this first quarter. Seven seconds, and they got the play in. Here's the snap. Handoff, and it's over the Attaboy. middle of the line is Lester, and he gets enough for a first down. Is it going to be first down and 10 for Campbell County? And on the tackle was Fagans. And it's going to be a first and 10 for Campbell County inside the red zone at McDowell Real Estate Red Zone, folks. Anytime that you need any real estate needs, McDowell Real Estate can service all your needs. Here's the snap. 
It's going to be quarterback keeper to the far side, and he's going to get over the five-yard line. They're going to mark him down at the five, and it's going to bring up a second down and goal. Fegans once again. I'm not a fan of, uh, of running hands down. Just <laughs> you got big, strong Will Lester there. You know, he's moving the ball. Just hand it off, but we'll see. It's going to be a second and goal. Three receivers near side, single receiver to the far side. In the backfield, looks like it's going to be Lester. As the Cherokees is on defense. Here's the snap. Passes away. It's going to be complete. He looks like he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Campbell County. Got it. That's a Casey Allen insurance touchdown, and we are playing the McMinn County Cherokees, and Campbell County just got on the board. <laughs> that's exactly right. That looked like Ferguson, I believe. Um, just, just That's the way it usually looks. I'm glad to see her start to get back on track. So now it's going to be the Cherokees seven, the Cougars six. In to kick the extra point is Austin. To snap the football is Miller. To hold is Jones. Here's the snap. Kick is up. Looks like it's blocked, but it may be because he was off sides as we have a penalty flag on the play. Let's see what the call will be. It's going to be a dead ball offsides. That's half the distance to the goal. Go for two. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it backfired too. on us one time already. Though. Yes, it did. So they're going to stay in there and kick the extra point. As it's half the distance to the goal. We'll move it up to the one and a half yard line. As Austin will stay in there, I could block a <laughs> field goal attempt too if I was offsides. You ain't kidding. So to hold is Jones to snap the football is Miller to kick the extra point is Austin. Here's the snap, good snap, kick is up. Looks like it's good from here. We'll wait for the official word. It is good. The score, the Cherokees 7, the Cougars 7. You're listening to WLF and the Doors Tire Sports Network. The Nova Medical Group is making it easier to see a primary care provider in the La Follette area quickly. Schedule an appointment online anytime at tonovalafollettepcp.com. Whether you're a contractor or you're just handling a project around the house or farm, CNO Metal Sales has the best prices in the tri state. Metal roofing custom cuts as well as delivery are available from CNO Metal. Be sure and ask us about our lifetime warranty on metal. Matt Klein can handle your big or small jobs from one piece of metal to a hundred. Select from 22 colors. CNO Metal Sales is right behind O'Reilly's Auto Parts in Middlesboro. Just take a left at the first stoplight and CNL is on the right. See or call Matt at 606 248 this is Matthew Klein, former Cougar number 42. Come see me at CNL Metal. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name's Les Martin along with Brent Allen. It is a tie game, 7 all. Campbell County finally on the board at the 127 mark in this first quarter as Campbell County received the ball and was hoping to get a touchdown but um, came up short. So now it's going to be a high end over end kick. It's going to come down at the 35 to the 40. It's going to be tackled there. It looks like by 27. 27 <laughs> for Campbell County. Noah That's Smith. Noah Smith. I, I knew I knew I, that. I did number. too. I started to say Smith, but I was like, oh, I don't want to say the wrong one. But, yeah, it's him. Mikey Albright is in on defense. Johnson comes out. We've got Jones, Shanks, Ferguson, Miller. We've got Noah Smith on the far side, Will Lester in the middle, Jamal Wright in the middle, Caleb Muncy on this near side, and also Keegan Cowan. Here's the snap. It's going to be handoff right up the middle. He picks up a huge chunk of yardage, enough for a first down for the Cherokees. So it's going to be a first and ten inside Campbell County territory as Smith was in on the tackle for Campbell County along with Will Lester. So it's going to be first down and 10 for McMahon County Cherokees. Campbell County is all tied up at 7-7. Miller in the backfield. Handoff once again to Miller. Hit right away. Hit right away 
by Noah Smith, Caleb Muncy. It's going to be pickup of four yards. We'll bring up second down and six. You got to stick him. You know we can't just grab him. I don't know. We've talked about this before. Um, you could watch on that play, grabbing from the side. They got him, but it'd be nice to put a lick on him. Yes, sir. Two receivers near side. Miller, for some reason, shows that he's leaning. He hit right absolutely. away by the Jamal Wright. He gets nowhere. Don't talk. Just get up and walk That's back it. to the huddle. Business. Yes. Act like you've been here. Wright's having a good night so far. Yes, he is. That's how you do it. You and stick them. Yes, you stick them. <laughs> it's going to be third down. We've got the, the end of the first quarter to score. Campbell County 7, McMinn County 7. You're listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tires Sports Network. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. Grace Rehab is the only one that has a pool. It has really helped all of us that have been coming for quite a while. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. The Cherokees and the Cougars are tied at 7-7 seven to seven in this first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. We are at the beginning of the second quarter. As Campbell County looks to be a little rough starting, but now it seems like on offense and defense, we're trying to get, we're, we about got our legs. Yep, yep, seems to be coming around. Um, that, that last hit by Rock, you know, was a possible uh, collision as well. Uh, Absolutely. That was, that was a big stick, and that's uh, what we like to see. That's a Josh Pearl body shop collision for sure. It's going to be third down and seven for the Cherokees of McMinn County. Shotgun formation for Hester. Rolls to the far side looking, feeling some pressure, passes away. Incomplete mm. there, falls incomplete. And it's going to bring up fourth and seven. Let's see what they will do. So it's going to be fourth down and seven for the Cherokees. It looks like they're going to bring the punter in to punt the football away. They're inside Campbell County territory at the 46-yard line of the Cougars. Certainly have to watch the ball. Certainly have to watch the fake yeah. punt. This kid's got a leg, too. It looks like Campbell County is going to play up close. Yeah, Sullen's in to punt the ball away. It's a good snap. Punts away a high driving spiral. It's going to land at the 10 and roll all the way down inside the five-yard line to the four. <laughs> what a punt. That was a great punt. I think the young man that downed it thought that was the goal line. He was on the wrong line, but uh, it was still a great punt. Put us in pretty bad position. So it's going to be first down and 10, Campbell County, traveling from our left to our right with four on the four-yard line with 11.44 left to go in this second quarter to score 7-7. Seven, seven. Campbell County is certainly going to be in a situation to where if they can get out of this hole and kind of loosen up and open up the offense and loosen the defense up, we could see another touchdown, folks. Of course, I would like to see a 96-yarder right here to Peyton Ferguson, <laughs> to be honest with you. Shotgun formation. Go ahead, Brent. Owens in the backfield. Owens in the backfield. Single receiver to this near side. Three receivers to the far side. Now has to play in with seven seconds. Gavin Owens will move to this near side. Snap. Good snap. Feeling some pressure. He's going to take off. He's going to be a safety. It's going to be a safety as it was a handoff to Owens, and Owens had no place to go. Yeah, just got beat. I mean, that's just uh, uh, offensive line scrimmage has to get some kind of a push, make some kind of a hole. You can't uh, you can't expect a, a young running back like that to push five, six hundred pounds of bodies out of the way. So now the score is McMinn County Charities nine, Campbell County seven. As now Campbell County will have to kick off or punt either which one they would like to do. They have well, that choice. You know, and, and I look at it like this. Some of the, a lot of the games this year have been so close and so exciting. That's all we're doing. We're just trying to make it exciting. Coach sure. Price has got it all under control. Absolutely. I agree with that. These kids will be fine. Trust me, they will be fine. 
So the score is McMinn County 9, Campbell County 7. There's 11.38 left to go in this second quarter as Campbell County will have to kick off or punt. We'll wait and see what they're going to do. I would say they're probably going to kick off with Austin, and he will have to kick off from, looks like the 20 of Campbell County. So now Campbell County has the football in a bad situation. We get tackled in the end zone for a safety. Now Austin will kick off from his own 20. That's 20 yards back behind where they normally kick off. Yeah, yeah McMinn County is going to have good field position no matter what happens here. Sure. Austin approaches the football. He's going to kick it high and long all the way over to the 32-yard line, up to the 40, up here to the 45, to the 50. He's going to be tackled there. It looks like it was Gavin Owens and Will Lester yep. in on the tackle for Campbell County as they put the football down at the 47-yard line of the Cougars. That was a good kick. I'm, I, was, I mean, I was impressed with that kick. From he drove it all the way to the 30. Yeah. 32, actually, but still pretty good. Yep. Real good. So now it's going to be first and 10 for the Cherokees, traveling from our right to our left, two receivers to this near side, single receiver to the far side. Here's a snap. Hand off up the middle to Miller. Miller's going to be tackled there by a couple of Campbell County Cougars. And let's see who got him. Noah Smith. So now it's going to be second down and six yards to go for the Cherokees. Traveling from our right to our left. The Cougars has their back against the wall. Three receivers to this near side. Hand off one more time to Miller to this near side. Being strung out by Shanks and finally being run out of bounds there at the 33-yard line. And it's going to be a first down for the Cherokees traveling from our right to our left. Run out of bounds. Miller doesn't look like he's running fast, but he's methodical and he makes his cut and he makes his mind up and that's the direction he's going. Yeah, man, he's a good sized kid, about the same size as uh, Will Lester. You know, he's just a big, strong kid. He put a nice stiff arm on somebody on the last run. Shotgun formation for Hester. Single receiver to this near side. Handoff once again to, wow. Handoff nice. to Miller and Ethan Johnson. He goes nowhere. Yeah, that was big. It's going to be second down and 10. Stop by Smith. Second down and 10 for the Cherokees. Single receiver near side. Three receivers to the far side as Hester now directing traffic. Miller to this near side. Calling out the signals is Hester. Here's the snap. Hand off one more time to this near side. It's up to the 20. All the way up to the 10. Into the end zone. There's no penalty flags on the play. I don't see one. They, I do not see a penalty flag on the play, so that's going to be touchdown Cherokee. The Cherokees puts on six more. Still in this game. We're still in this game. The score is McMinn County Cherokees 15, the Cougars 7. Here's the snap. Passes away. Pass is complete. It's going to be a two-point conversion. It's going to be 17 to 7 for McMinn County against Campbell County. We've got plenty of time. There's only 10 minutes and nine seconds left to go in this second quarter. We got plenty of time. Plenty of time to adjust, especially at halftime. So I'm not worried right now, to be honest with you. I mean, Campbell County can strike extremely quick. Yeah, but they're going to have to. And, uh, and as Coach Pross talked about in his interview, this is a very disciplined team. Um, they appear to be well coached. I mean, they come out here, they're, they're making things happen. They're, they're blocking well. Even They're undersized, and they're still blocking our guys around. And uh, coming out and going for a two-point conversion like that, and uh, it's just a well-coached, well-disciplined team. We've got to get hot. Yes, in a hurry. 
The score is 17 for McMinn County, Campbell County 7, as McMinn County will kick off from their own 40. And at some point in time, I don't know why I'm saying this, I just got this <laughs> feeling, you have to kind of watch for an onside kick as well. Yeah, as aggressive as, they, as they've been so far, I wouldn't uh, put it past them, and I wouldn't blame them, you know. So Campbell County, barring any catastrophic failures on this kickoff return, uh, should have the football. Sullen's back deep, standing back at his 30-yard line, is approaching the football, and he's going to kick it high end over end. It's going to come down to Ferguson, and it's going to go in the end zone. It's going to be first down and 10 for Campbell County at their own 20-yard line. So that's okay. Yep, big leg, showed it off that time. Must have had the breeze with him. He must have. <laughs> He's got a, he can kick the football and he certainly can punt it as well. Yes, we, we found out bo both of those already during this game. Shotgun formation, two receivers to this near side, three receivers to the far side. Why put in anybody in the backfield when you've got plenty of protection? Shotgun formation for Hensley's. Hensley looking over the offensive line. Calling out the signals, has the snap, balls away, is complete to Jones. Jones up to the 40, up to the 45, to the 50, all the way up to the 48-yard line of the Cherokees. And that's going to be Hensley's tire first down. In on the tackle was Fegans. And also, that is a horse side bank big play by the Cougars. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, that's what we're more used to or accustomed to see, and, and hopefully it continues. Shotgun formation once again. The chain gang's finally getting in line and getting set up. Two receivers near side, two receivers to the far side. Will Lester now will be shifted to this near side as well. I didn't see him on the first call. He's lined up in the slot. Here's the snap, quarterback draw, right up the middle to the 40. And it should have been a there penalty flag. There and there comes the penalty flag as that was a face mask against McMinn County. It's going to be personal foul, face mask. That's going to be another 15 yards on top of it. So that's another Hensley's tire first down. And I want to say this, it's another harsh side bank. Take it to the bank, big play for the Cougars. Yeah, nice. Uh, nothing dirty there. The kid just reached out and uh, accidentally grabbed his helmet. First down and 10 from the 23-yard line of McMinn County. The Cherokees up 17-7 with 9.09 left to go in this second quarter. It's first and 10, Campbell County. Hensley's tire first down. Here's the snap, looking. Passes away. It's going to be complete to Lester. Gets hit right away. He almost got hit before the ball got yeah, there. Yeah, great concentration, though, hanging on to that ball. Yep, as that was Nunez in on the tackle for the Cherokees. Yeah, didn't pick up much, but uh, again, just a very heads-up play from a senior. Four receivers to this near side. Single receiver to the far side. Empty backfield. 16 seconds on the play clock. Got plenty of time. 8.24 on the game clock in this second quarter. The score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. Campbell County can certainly move the ball. Here's a snap. Looking. Passes away. Ferguson is intended for Ferguson. It's knocked down at the last second. And it's going to be a second, excuse me, a third down and eight. Broken up by Miller. Yeah, I mean, they're, we're calling it broken up. He, dropped he just it. dropped it. Yeah, <laughs> He had both hands on it and uh, just didn't hold on, thankfully. Yes, it was in the end zone as well. It would have been coming out to the 20, but still, yet yeah, we, we dodged a bullet on that play. That's right. We've got two receivers to this near side, two receivers to the far side. And that should have been mm -hmm. a offsides by McMinn County, but no call. Now we have a timeout, Campbell County. We'll take it with them to score. McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLAF and the Doors Tire Sports Network. Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. 
you work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen, the score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. And Campbell County has the football at the 21 yard line and it's going to be third down and eight for Campbell County. Campbell County has one timeout left. Three receivers near side, two receivers to the far side. As now they have Owens to the far side with Miller. Shanks, Jones, and Ferguson to this near side. Feeling some pressure. He's going to be sacked back at the 25-yard line. They got through that time. Yeah, got to, got to protect. Um, but he made a good move, you know, past, got past the first guy, but there was another guy right behind him. Yeah. Campbell County is going to go for it on fourth down and 12. You certainly would hope to think that you would be in a better position than what you are on uh, these late second and third downs. But McMinn County so far is looks like they've made some adjustments and starting to get some pressure. Yep. Empty backfield for Hensley, single receiver far side, four receivers to this near side. Here's the snap, rolling to this near side, looking, passes away, it's gonna be complete, it's gonna be close to a first down. Let's see where they mark him. They're gonna mark him short. I don't know how they're gonna mark him that short, but it's probably not gonna be a first down. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. They're going to call a timeout. We'll take a break. The score is McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tire Sports Network. BP is back. Rice Oil has brought back BP to Big O's Get and Go and Cumberland Crossing BP. BP provides the energy that keeps Campbell County and America moving and helps drive the U.S. economy. Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco from Rice Oil, La Follette. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. I was practicing while we were gone <laughs> to say first down Campbell County. A Hensley's Tire first down. We are inside the McDowell Real Estate Red Zone on our way to Casey Allen Insurance Touchdown, folks. For all your insurance need, call on Casey Allen. The superstar number 22's mother. <laughs> I think that was Jones on that reception, and uh, if so, that was as big of a play as his big, uh, big long reception earlier. Shotgun formation, empty backfield. Three receivers to the far side, two receivers to this near side. Campbell County scores, they're back in this thing. The defense has got to play better. They can't get slack. Here's a snap, and it's going to be a penalty flag on the play. Dead ball, false start. I don't know how they can see that on us, and they can't see it on the Cherokees. Me either, but they do. Wow. That's going to back them up five yards. Campbell County on a false start. It's going to be first down and 15. We'll place the ball down at the 18-yard line of the Cherokees. Shotgun formation. Lester in the backfield. Three receivers far side. Single receiver to this near side, which is Miller. We've got Jones and Shanks. And then on the outside, we have Ferguson. We six seconds on the play clock, counting down four seconds. Going to have to get it off quick, and they do not. Penalty flag on the play, delay a game. That's going to back them up another five yards. Uh, they're playing like they don't want to win, and this is getting irritating. They're going to have to tighten up. That includes coaching and all. You got to get those plays in. We know how you can see the clock. You know, there's only so fast you can make that happen uh, once the play's in. 
So now it's going to be a first and 20 at the 23-yard line of the Cherokees, traveling from our left to our right. 621 left to go in this second quarter. The score, the Cherokees 17, Campbell County 7. As we're now waiting, we got the ready for play signal. The clock is counting down. Now they're going to put Jones to this near side and Miller, excuse me, with Miller and Lester to the far side with Shanks and Ferguson. First, and First down and 20 yards to go. Here's the snap. Looking downfield, feels some pressure, passes away. It's almost intercepted one more time. It falls incomplete about the three yard line. You know, that, so far, uh, McMahon County has run the exact same defense every play. Sure. And those safeties are, are setting deep, like you said, keeping everything in front of them. Um, and that was a perfect example of, of why. You know, you've got a guy covering. He sees it coming. I mean, it's just a very simple play for a safety. I'm glad he didn't catch it. But um, it's time to change it up a little. We've got to get something changed, something going on. Four receivers to the far side, single receiver to this near side. Maybe throw the short game across the middle on the post patterns or the quick slants. Second and 20. Here's the snap. Looking. Passes away. Passes complete to Lester. Lester over the 20. And he's going to be tackled there at the 19-yard line. Wow, what a hit. There was a couple of them that... Got him good, and he's back up, up and back on his feet. Tackled by Nunez for McMinn County, so it's going to be a third down and 16 for Campbell County. Campbell County has three receivers to the far side, two receivers to this near side, and it's third and 16. Got to pick up some yards here. Here's the snap, looking, passes away. Pass is going to be complete. To Miller, as he's inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. And that's going to bring up a very manageable fourth down for Campbell County. Yeah, if I remember correctly, Shanks has only been targeted that one time and it went over his head. Uh, he's been quite look for him on this play. It's fourth down and five yards to go for Campbell County, traveling from our left to our right with 5.02 left to go in this second quarter. The score is the Cherokees. 17, Campbell County, 7. Here's a snap. Looks good. He's feeling some pressure. Passes away. It's going to be falling out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. As now it will be a turnover on downs, and it was going to be a first down and 10 from the 13-yard line for McMinn County. The receivers aren't getting the separation that, that – Hensley wants to see. You know, he's having a tough time. He's, he's, he's not wanting to throw an interception, um, but it's holding the ball because there's not enough separation. And I, I, I think he basically threw it away on that one, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, you know, he's a young quarterback, but let me tell you this. Earlier in the year, and even up until two weeks ago, it didn't matter if they had a lot of separation. He was throwing the ball. Oh, yeah, I agree. Here's a handoff up the middle one more time. Bounces it out to this near side, and it's going to be run, run out of bounds there. As that was Miller and Jamal Wright in on the tackle for Campbell County. Yeah, Wright's playing a heck of a game. I love, I love the way he's bringing it to him. He's hitting hard. He's sticking him. Yes, he is. That could be another Jasper body shop collision right there. As he not only stuck him, but he also made sure they hit the ground pretty hard too. <laughs> Cherokee. The Cherokees has a first down. It's first and ten. 4.23, Hester hands off the football and getting hit by Johnson right away and Noah Smith along with Caleb Muncie as well. So they get nowhere. Let's see where they're going to mark the football at. 4.02 left to go in this second quarter. And it's going to be second down and 10 for the Cherokees. Shotgun formation for Hester. 
Now we have an H-back position lined up over Johnson. Here's the snap. It's a high snap. It's going to be a quarterback keeper. Boom. She gets hit one good time by Peyton Ferguson. So that's going to bring up a third down and five. Another good hard hit there by Ferguson. Yes, it was. I look at it like, you know, like in boxing or whatever, the body blows. You know, you, you wear them down over time. You keep hitting them, keep hitting them. It makes a difference in the end of the game. Third down and three. Single receiver this near side. Hand off one more time up the middle, and then Miller gets hit right away. Hit right away by look like Lester and Mikey Albright. So that's going to bring up a fourth down. It's going to bring up a fourth down and one for McMahon County. And this I don't understand, but we were getting 25 second clocks. They're getting 40. <laughs> No, oh, they, now they're going to reset it to 25. Okay. There we go. Good eye. Yes. Shotgun formation for Hester. As it looks like Campbell County may be blitzing on this play. Single receiver to this near side. Two receivers to the far side as Miller is in the backfield. Hester calling out the signals. Not offside yet. Nope. Not offside yet. And now there, the, there we go, a penalty flag. And no, they got the timeout first. We'll take it with them, folks, to score. McMahon County 17, Campbell County 7. You'll listen to the WLAF and the Dole's Tire Sports Network. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in a surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing. 423-566-6561. Tenova Medical Group is making it easier to see a primary care provider in the La Follette area quickly. Schedule an appointment online anytime at tenovalafollettepcp.com. Welcome back to Cherokee's Stadium. It's going to be a fourth and one. Fourth and one for... Uh-oh. The Cherokees, and it looks like they're going to go for it as they're going to line up the quarterback. And it looks like it may have been a false jump. start. Yeah, it looks like, a looks like it guard. may have been a false start against the Cherokees. Let's see what this call will be. It's going to be a dead ball <laughs> against Campbell County. So that's going to be a five yard penalty. Interference, I can only assume, with the football or calling out signals or something like that is the only thing I can think of that they're calling. But it's going to be first down and 10 for McMinn County. That's disappointing. Yeah, very. First down from the 33-yard line of the Cherokees, traveling from our right to our left. Very high snap. Quarterback keeper up to the 45, up to the 40, all the way down to the... 36-yard line of Campbell County. We certainly have to stop them. Uh, we can't. We cannot allow them to get into the end zone again, or even a uh, field goal. Uh, they're probably already in field goal. <laughs> you know, for that uh, for that kicker, if he's a he's got a leg. It's one minute and 46 seconds left to go. We've got to stop them on the defensive side of the ball. Hand off to Miller. Miller up to middle, getting hit there by Will Lester, and he's going to be dri driven back, but he picks up two yards. Johnson was in there as well. Mason Shanks, just to name a couple. And it's going to be a second down and nine yards to go. 122 and counting down in this second quarter to score. McMinn County 17. And Campbell County, seven. Shotgun formation, single receiver near side, two receivers far side. Hensley now in motion. Here's the snap, passes away, almost intercepted. 
almost intercepted. Stops the clock with 102 left. So now it's, it's going to be third down and nine. That was almost intercepted by Jones. He went for the player instead of the ball, but still yet. I mean, it yeah. was close. Yep. McMahon County has the football traveling from our right to our left. Third and nine. 17 seconds left to go on the play clock. 102 left to go in this second quarter. The score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. Calling out the signal, sends now Hensley in motion. It's going to be a quarterback draw. That oh should have been holding right there as Johnson and at Owens make sure he goes nowhere, and it's going to bring up a fourth down for McMinn County. Hester Camp, the football. Picks up maybe a yard, maybe two. So there's 42 seconds and counting down. This brings up fourth down and eight yards to go for McMinn County. Calling out the signals is Hester. Looks like he's just going to wait. 14 seconds left to go on the play clock and 25 seconds left to go on the game clock in this second quarter. Here's the snap. Looking downfield, feeling some pressure, passes away. It's going to be complete all the way up to the 21-yard line of Campbell County. As he took a shot, Hensley took a shot. Not Landon, but Hensley for McMinn County. So he's got to come off, and there's going to be 13.8 seconds left to go. They're taking a timeout. We'll take it with them. The score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLAF and the Doors Tires Sports Network. Citizens Bank is a locally owned and operated bank serving communities in East Tennessee. The bank was established in 1934 with three guiding principles at its foundation. Assurance of safety to depositors, a high standard of service to customers, and a genuine desire to serve the community. These principles are the core factor in the success that has lasted over 85 years and grown Citizens Bank to the renowned financial institution it is today. To learn more about Citizens Bank, visit CitizensBank24.com. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin, along with Mr. Brent Allen. And, you know, Campbell County's not played well, but they're still in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about that. But, and uh, go ahead. It, it's difficult for us fans and us broadcasters to watch what we're seeing when we know they're capable of being better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some, some of the calls so far have been, uh, you know, or some missing calls, I guess you would say, is uh, is could be interesting. I mean, that's a uh, it changes the game, you know. And when you when you don't call calls that need to be there, everybody in the building saw it. It's uh, it's tough. First, and ten, First down and ten for the Cherokees, spotted at the 23-yard line or the 21, actually. Here's the snap. Rolling to this narrow side is Hester, feeling some pressure, passes away. It's over the head, falls incomplete, brings up. Second down with eight seconds left to go. And will they send in the field goal kicker? Will they try to play one more? Will they do make one more play at the end zone? Yeah, it looks like it's going to keep the guys out there and try it again. Um, again, question why our, our defense is not doing the same, you know, not putting our safeties deep and keeping anybody from getting by. That's uh, strange at this point. It's going to be shotgun formation for... Hester, Miller to the right, three receivers near side, single receiver far side. You certainly do not want to get a defensive penalty here. Here's the snap. Feeling some pressure. He's going to take off, and then he changed his mind. Passes away. It's going to be knocked down by Shanks. Was that Shanks? Yep. yep. Mason Shanks knocks it down at the end of the second quarter. Clutch. Clutch play. No penalty flag on the play. So that's going to be the end of the first half. The score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have the 2022 high school, Campbell County High School Marching Band, and they are awesome, folks. You will not want to miss this performance at halftime. You're listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tires Sports Network. Hello, Cougar fans. I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. 
Gray Insurance is your local independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. Now Campbell County is on the field, the high school marching band for 2022, and they're awesome, folks. So just sit back and relax and enjoy. Hard day's night. Yesterday, Eleanor Rigby and Hey Jude. The Cougar Band is under the field direction of drum majors Lauren Van Beber and JoLynn Phillips. The Cougar Band captain is Hunter Wilson. The percussion captain is Larry Bird. And the color guard captain is Keely Sims. Tonight's featured soloists include trumpet, Brandon Cummings, alto saxophone, Joanne Begley, trombone, Nathan Payne, color guard, Brendan Hurst, and Keely Sims.
Folks, that was the 2022 20, Campbell County High School Marching Band, as they done fantastic. I stood outside the press box, stood there on the little ledge, and enjoyed every minute of it. And it, I enjoyed every weekend, every halftime on every Friday night. So they do a fantastic job. Folks, we're going to step away for a commercial break. When we return, we'll have we'll break down the first half. Brent and I will try to get a second wind here and get us through this next two quarters. You're listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tires Sports Network. Hello Cougar fans, I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. Gray Insurance is your local independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. 
Terry's Pharmacy delivers. Whether it's at their drive throughs at the curbside, or at your doorstep, Terry's is delivering countywide. Don't want to get out of the house? Terry's will safely deliver to your door. Anxious about your pharmacy not having a drive through Terry's will seamlessly help you transfer your prescriptions so you can drive through at one of Terry's convenient locations, La Follett and Jacksboro. At the drive throughs drop off your prescription and wait in the parking lot for your phone call when it's ready. Have a question? Want to transfer your prescription? Just call Terry's, 423-5. 562-4928. 562-4928. No matter where you are in Campbell County, you're liable to see us on deliveries. Just honk and wave. At United Cumberland Bank, our number one focus is people. You see, our employees are our largest shareholders, and they are dedicated to ensure your financial success. And one of the biggest financial decisions you can make is a home loan, and we will help every step of the way. Buying a home is a huge decision, so is choosing the right lender. Find out more at unitedcumberland.com. United Cumberland Bank. Generations of trust. Neighbors you know. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. All loans subject to credit approval. Quality and Clayton go hand in hand. That's quality constructed homes from Clayton Homes. The staff at Clayton Homes, located right here at home in Campbell County at Jacksboro, is ready to help you through all the steps of home ownership, from selecting the home that's just right for you to putting the keys in your hand. Since 1956, Clayton Homes has been making dreams come true. See the home folks about your new dream home from Clayton Homes, 110 North Street near Jacksboro Middle School. Call or just come on by. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. We're going to talk a little bit about some stats, and, and a little bit is all we're going to talk about on stats <laughs> because that's all we have. That's the truth. We've got 177 yards by McMinn County, 131 by Campbell County. Here is the difference. McMinn County's got 139 yards on the ground. Campbell County's got 15. Campbell County's got 116 in the air. McMinn County's got 38. Entirely different from two of these offenses. One is run heavy, one is pass heavy. What do you do in this situation if you're Campbell County? Do you put yourself in the situation to where maybe we come out, stick to our game plan, or do you throw in a wrinkle here and there? Well, I mean, you'd like to think a wrinkle would be the thing. I just think I think uh, McMinn County's playing good defense. I mean, they've got. They're, they're sinking those guys back, and the guys up front are doing a good job of making a good solid tackle. And uh, we've just got to get more separation. Um, it looks like the line's doing pretty well. Um, no, no issues there. Um, you know, it'd be nice to to have a run game, um, something to kind of switch it up. But uh, I don't think they're going to go in that direction. Um, not that they couldn't, but they just prefer to stick with what they've got, and uh, it's worked. You know, it works. It's just a matter of tonight. It's been a, a little, a little rough. Well, perfect scenario right here I'm gonna give it to you give it to me the middle line the linebackers are playing up every time they throw it to on a slant Campbell County's getting hit right away mm -hmm. the safeties are deep mm -hmm. the corners are playing up why not get in between the linebackers and the safeties well yeah I mean that's what you'd like to do but I want to give uh credit to the safeties for this team they're they're both very uh, active very athletic and uh looks like i mean i think they're both seniors and they're they're able to gain ground quickly you know to make up that ground i mean it would work you just have to be careful not to uh throw a pick you know well i think for landon hensley uh, i think he's playing a um pretty decent game but i think that he's seeing a setup from McMinn County that's kind of got him a little leery to throw the ball in places that he's threw the ball in places before. Yeah, I agree. Um, but again, you know, if if you think about some of the previous games this year, many of the games, um, we've got we've got receivers running wide open down the field, and he hits them. You know, they've not been wide open. We've not had that because of the defense that they're playing. The thing is, you know, Coach Price, it's on him at this point. You know, he, he's the he's the uh, offense guru or whatever. You know, he's got to figure out a way. They've been running the same defense all night long, and we've got to figure out a way. I don't know how to do it. He probably does. I don't. <laughs> but but he, he needs to uh, come up with something. Okay, folks, we're going to step away for a commercial break. The score at halftime is McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. You are listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tires Sports Network. 
The folks at Hensley Tire and Service welcome you by their new location at the corner of Beach and Indiana Avenue in La Follette. Hensley's Tire and Service provides road service going to customers stuck on the highway somewhere with tire or engine trouble. Servicing tractor trailer trucks is another service offered along with mechanical work, alignment, and lifts. 423-563-TIRE. That's 563-8473. At First National Bank, we put you first with local lending and local decisions. Our First National Bank lenders are a part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FNB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Futures! Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage. Nursery. Shh. Sorry. Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal. And it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent. Not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. The Follett Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. We've got a very, 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 very special announcement. (laughs) That's right. Absolutely. We've got to make sure that everybody understands who we're talking about. Yeah, that's true. That's when true. you take your whole adult life and dedicate it to being a teacher in any school system, but this teacher is at Campbell County High School, retired teacher, Miss Judy Parker, watching in Harrogate, Tennessee. We want to give you a shout out and say thank you for all your hard years of working in the school system. I know it takes a special individual to do that from the time you get out of college until the time that you retire. Yeah, a great lady, great teacher. She always came up with innovative ways, you know, to teach and to help kids keep uh, interested and and learning new ways. And uh, fantastic job. Great teacher. And not only that, we got to say a shout out to all of our teachers. I mean, stop and think about what they're faced with today. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's tough. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I remember back in the day when I was going to school, you got a hug if you needed it, and you got a spanking if you needed it. Yeah, yeah, times have definitely changed. I mean, it's uh, it's got to be a lot tougher these days. When when I went to school, you know, the, the what the teacher says is is it. That's it. There's That's no it. talking back. There's <laughs> no, you know, uh, they run they run it. These days, you know, kids are a little, little tougher to deal with for whatever reason, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for them that do that. Um, that's a tough job. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's a tough job. Folks, we'll step away for a commercial break. The score at halftime, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLAF and the Dual Tires Sports Network. Hi, this is Kimberly Burge here at Burge Screen Printing. We work to bring your idea to reality. We specialize in custom screen printing, direct-to-garment full-color printing for all your apparel needs. We also do full-color printing on signs, banners, and much more. Hey, this is Larry Burge. Stop by and see us today in downtown La Follette at 225 East Central Avenue or call 423-562-3044. 562-3044. Go Cougars! And welcome to Charlie's Pizza. We're world famous and I always have been. We appreciate everybody's business. Everybody's like family to us. We appreciate you. Come on down and see us. Mmm, yum. Yeah, it's the after the game place to be. Charlie's Pizza, that is. I went to Charlie's Pizza as a teenager and now I take my kids. You can count on seeing me and Logan and Seth down there after about every game. My favorite part of Charlie's Pizza is the special. Yep, same old Charlie's Pizza. I love Charlie's Pizza. It's very delicious. World famous Charlie's Pizza. 
You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423-201-9799. Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stoplight 10 on East Central at Cumberland. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. The score at halftime is McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. You know, Campbell County's in this game by... By no stretch of the imagination are we out of this playoff game at all. No, oh, I agree. We've been in much worse situations than this. Um, obviously, some things are going to have to change. Um, unfortunately, they get the ball first um, coming out of halftime. But uh, defense stands up, gets a few stops, and uh, we're right back in it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that offensively and defensively, I believe that Coach Price and Coach Matt Price will make some adjustments. And I think they may be hitting these receivers on the back side of the linebackers and in front of the safeties. I think it's a very good place to start. And if you got to do something to loosen this defense up of, of McMinn County. I agree. And, again, you know, uh, I'd like to see some running. Um, it's been pretty successful, I mean, with the exception of the, of the uh, safety. <laughs> but other than that, it's been pretty successful. I just don't like seeing – our quarterback run, uh, not that he's not tough, he certainly is, but uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta protect him and uh, let those other guys take care of that. Folks, the score here, starting at this third quarter, is McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. Campbell County will kick off from our right to our left, as Eli Austin will be the one to kick off. It looks like we may have the good hands team on. And let's hope so. Because I'm all four big plays. Yeah, me too. All four big plays, folks. Isaac's training room, folks, I'm telling you, if you've got it in the gut or any other places, it's winter time's coming up. We've got to turn our clocks back uh, Saturday night. Nobody wants to do that. It's going to get dark early. We're going to go home. We're going to sit down. We're going to eat. And we're going to watch the TV. you got to go exercise. Austin approaches the football, kicks it high end over end, comes down at the 13-yard line, up to the 20, to the 25. Oh, Boom. my gosh, what a hit. What a hit. And that looked like it was by Gavin Owens. That's correct. Wow. Thank you for getting the number <laughs> for me, brother. Yeah, that guy zigged when he should have zagged, and uh, Owens straightened him out. So now it's going to be first down and 10. The ball is spotted at the... 25-yard line, 26-yard line of the Cherokees traveling from our left to our right. Two receivers to this near side, single receiver to the far outside on the far side of the field. It's going to be handoff immediately, and he's going to be hit immediately, and it's going to be dropped. That was Miller. He goes nowhere. He may have lost a yard. No, they're going to give him to forward progress back to the line of scrimmage, which is how can we have penetration and he still get back to the line of scrimmage? <laughs> I don't know. That was, great, that was a great job by Albright, though. He's the one that clogged that up and just uh, just pushed the center right back into the play, and uh, everybody else was there to clean it up. Three receivers near side for McMinn County, single receiver to the far side. Hester, shotgun formation, pass. He's going to get hit right away, and he's going to get hit as well nice. by Mason Shanks. Mason Shanks wraps up, and as it looks like now, the dog fights on for Campbell County. Yeah, as it should be. You know, that's time. I hope the, the coaches uh, got in their ear, so to say, and uh, <laughs> and uh, got them fired up. So far in this series, it certainly looks that way. Third down and 10. I can't believe 
They ain't lost a <laughs> one yard. <laughs> Three receivers to the far side, single receiver to this near side. As Jones will back off, here comes some pressure. Passes away, almost nice. intercepted by Lester. Falls incomplete. Pass was intended for Miller. That's going to bring up fourth down and ten, and that's what, exactly what we needed. Yeah, good pressure by Johnson there. Even though we got held at the end, he was still able to get enough uh, enough umph in there and get in the quarterback's face. Peyton Ferguson back deep for Campbell County. It's going to be fourth and eleven for the Cherokees, traveling from our left to our right, back deep for. Ferguson standing back at his own 44-yard line. Here's the punt. It's high end over end. going to bounce at the 44, roll down inside the 30-yard line, all the way down to the 27-yard line, where it will be first down and 10. I thought he was going to boot it, but yeah, I think he got just, a good roll. Yeah, well, I think it kind of went off the front of his foot there. Didn't get a, didn't get a lot of foot into it, but still got a good roll. So it's going to be first down and 10 for Campbell County at the 27-yard line, and the defense looks like they're fired up here in this second half, early in this second half. Hard to tell, but it, they're playing a lot different. I agree. Shotgun formation, Lester in the backfield for Campbell County. Two receivers near side, two receivers to the far side. We've got one deep safety. Here's the snap. Pass is away. Pass is complete. Breaks through one tackle, couldn't break through the other tackle. That was Ferguson, and on the reception, man, he's tough. He, he is tough, but he shouldn't have to be. Somebody's got to make those blocks. You know, those are those. All these plays are designed for the receivers and maybe one of the uh, one of the linemen to roll out and, and get their blocks. And all you have to do is stay on them for a second. I say that like I can do it. It's tough. I'm just saying uh, that's that's how this play works. Uh, all these plays. Now it looks like they're playing tight coverage. I, I think that's when I would stretch the defense. If we can keep those safeties up close, as now they're going to back back out. Miller is one of those safeties. Here's a snap. Looking downfield, passes away. It's going to be complete to Shanks. Shanks across the 35 to the 36. I thought that was a horse collar there for a minute. So it's going to bring up a third it's down. Third down and four yards to go. Make it third and three. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage comes your Campbell County Cougars. Single receiver far side. Three receivers to this near side. 19 seconds on the play clock. Nine minutes and nine seconds on this game clock in this third quarter. The score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. Here's the snap. Looking, passes away. It's going to be complete to Jones. Turn it up. Up across the 40 to the 41. That's going to be Hensley's tire first down for Campbell County. You know, the past two plays, uh, I mean, Shanks and Jones both kind of lost their footing. We're playing on natural grass instead of turf. Don't know if that's got anything to do with it. Makes perfect sense, though. Mm -hmm. Two receivers near side, two receivers to the far side as Lester is in the backfield with Hensley. It is 8.29 and counting down in this third quarter. Calling out the signals is Hensley. Here's the snap. Looking downfield, feeling some pressure. Passes away just in time to Lester. Lester breaks over the 45-yard line, runs over one of the linemen. You ain't going to block. He'll help you block, won't he? <laughs> That's right. That was a nice cut by, by Lester there. Yep, it brings up a manageable second down and Five yards to go for a first down. It's much better in second and 10 and second and 12. So it looks like that the adjustments so far early in this second half is working. Mm -hmm. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Shotgun formation for Hensley. Here's the snap looking downfield. Passes away. It's going to be complete. That's beyond the first down marker or right at it. And that's going to be Shanks. They're going to mark him a little short, looks like from here. So it's going to be third and inches. It's going to be third down and inches for a first down. So much better, huh? Oh, yeah. So far, so good. I'm liking it. So now Campbell County has it third down and about a half a yard to go for a first down in Cherokee's territory. Snap the football. 
they won't. They would have caught 12 mm -hmm. men on the field, but that's okay. 658 and counting down. Calling out the signals is Hensley. Here's the snap. It's going to be quarterback keeper over the far side of the line. Looks like he got enough for a first down. Yes, he does. So it's going to be first down and 10. A Hensley's tire first down, folks. Hensley's tire serves you from two locations, La Follette and Huntsville. Also, folks, st stick around for the TCAT Cougar wrap-up show. Collectibles and more is your home for all kinds of sports memorabilia. Stop in to see former Cougar Justin Lettner on the four lane across from the Follett Church of God. They will have collectibles and more features wall-to-wall -wall fun. Here's the snap, rolling to this near side, feeling some pressure from the backside. He's going to step up, he's going to throw it, it's going to be complete to Shanks as he gets up, maybe a pickup of two for Campbell County. So now it's going to be a second down and eight. Collectibles and more. Hasbro action figures, board games, gaming cards like Magic and Pokemon. Also special orders for Christmas. Place your order now. Layaway for Christmas is coming soon. We have a timeout on the field as we've got a McMinn County player maybe has a cramp as he's got some players helping him. The score is McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. As he looks like he's going to make it off the field as we're going to be ready to go play football now. Second down and eight yards to go for the Campbell County Fighting Cougars. Calling out the signals. Now we'll take his time and look to the sideline to get the play in. And we have two receivers to the far side. Shanks and Ferguson, two receivers to the near side. Jones and Miller. Lester in motion to the far side. Here's the snap. Snap's good. Pass is away. It's going to be down to Jones. Off his fingertips and intercepted. All the way back up to the 20. Hensley has the ball for McMinn County as he'll not get away from Peyton Ferguson as he goes down at the 27-yard line of the Cherokees. Just the ball is not bouncing our way right now. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> it was yeah. off the fingertips of Jones and bounces backwards, I don't know how, and intercepted by the the safety for McMahon County. You just don't see that. No, a well-thrown well ball. You know, he was wide open like we've seen in the past and uh, just, just didn't go our way. Shotgun formation, handoff to Miller, up this, to the 30, across the 30 to the 34. So now it's gonna be a pickup of four. It's gonna be second down and six. I believe Muncie was in on that tackle. Yeah, it's uh, getting a little chippy. I'm watching some of the actions here. It's getting a little uh, little chippy, as they say. Second down and five for McMinn County. Two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Hand off to Miller one more time as he's continuing to lean. He is continuing to lean forward before the ball is snapped. Yeah, folks at home, you're welcome to, to pay attention. <laughs> it's uh, You're not allowed to do that. He's His body is, is clearly leaning forward before the ball is snapped, and uh, they've not called it one time tonight. So now it's going to be a first down, but now we have a stoppage on the play, maybe a penalty flag. I don't see one on this yellow no, green grass. Personal foul against McMinn County. That's going to back them up. I told you it's getting chippy. Yes, they are. That's going to back it up from the 36-yard line all the way back to the 21-yard line where it will be second down and 16 yards to go for a first down. Johnson kind of limped off the field. You hope, uh, hope he comes back in. Yes, sir. Second down and 16 for the Cherokees. Traveling from our left to our right. There's 418 left to go in this third quarter. The score, McMinn County 17, Campbell County 7. 
Here's a snap. It's going to be a high snap. Handoff to Miller. Miller over the Webb. far side of the line, and Webb makes the tackle. It's going to be third down. A pickup of two. Third and 14. Yeah, Storm Webb just manhandled his uh, offensive lineman, pushed him straight back in there, and uh, was able to – had enough speed to get, him, get a hold of him there and got him down. Yes, sir. Three receivers near side, single receiver to the far side. We've got one in the backfield, which is Miller. Now we have two to this near side and two to the far side receivers, that is. Calling out the signals is Hester. Here comes the pass, passes away. It's going to be, is it intercepted? It's intercepted it. by Peyton Ferguson at the 40 yard line. What a play. What a play. Hester threw the pass intended for Hensley, and Hensley could not come up with it, and Peyton Ferguson <laughs> wrestled away from him before he hit the ground. It's first yeah. down and 10, Campbell County. We needed that. Yeah, that was big. It, uh, that pretty much offsets that, that uh, interception we had a minute ago. If you looked at that play early on, it was one of those situations that you think that Ferguson was beat, but he turned on the afterburners and got there as the ball did. Yeah, not many other uh, – players have enough speed to make that play not closing speed anyway mm -hmm. so now it's going to be first down and 10 from the 40 yard line of the cougars here's the snap going to be a quarterback draw over the far side of the line goes nowhere maybe a yard maybe forward progress got him a yard so now it's going to be a second down and nine yards to go for campbell county Have we, I mentioned I'm not a fan of that? <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> Big old bruising men we've got in the backfield. <laughs> and you got an arm like Hensley. I don't know if I would run him ever. <laughs> That's just me. I'm not saying coach doesn't know right, what he's right, doing. Right. I would Be my luck, he'd get hurt. Yeah. Passes away. Passes complete to Ferguson. Ferguson could not get away. And now it's going to be a third down. It's going to be a third down for Campbell County. Let's see where they're going to mark the football. All the way back at the 38-yard line. So it's going to be third down and 14 yards to go for a first down. Yeah, same as before. You know, it's just it's just a matter of lack of lack of blocking. I mean, Ferguson's not going to get hit that quick um, if it's just him one on one. If some other, other guys are missing blocks and uh, it's blowing it up. Four receivers to this near side, single receiver to the far side. Shotgun formation for Landon Hensley. We've got Ferguson. We've got Mason Shanks, Jones. Here's the snap, looking, feeling some pressure, passes away. It's gonna be incomplete, intended for Owens. And it's gonna bring up a fourth down and 14. Fourth and 14 for Campbell County, traveling from our right to our left with 2.22 left to go in this third quarter. The score is the Cherokees 17, Campbell County 7. Shanks in to punt. Standing back at his 23-yard line. Calling out the signals. Here's the snap. Good snap. Punts away. Good punt. It's going to be fair caught at the 30-yard line where it will be first down and 10 for the Cherokees traveling from our left to our right. That's something else. <laughs> Trading turnovers right now, and now the, both the deep offensives on both sides is becoming stagnant. Yeah, sputtering a little bit. So we've got to make sure that this defense is still on playing on cue because we've got plenty of time to, to mm -hmm. close this game out with a victory. Yeah, two touchdowns wins it, you know. Absolutely. Shotgun formation for Hester. Hester, hand off to this near side to Miller. Miller goes nowhere. Maybe picks up a couple of yards as it looks like it was Muncie, Shanks, Jamal Wright, just to name a few. Yep, yeah, there's a bunch of them down there. So it's going to bring up a second down and seven yards to go for a first down. 
two receivers far side, two receivers to this near side. Miller in the backfield, Hester calling out the signals, looks over the defense, feeling, looking at the pressure coming. Here he's gonna stand back and throw the football wide open, down to the 30, and all the way down to the touchdown, McMinn County. They can strike fast if you're, <laughs> if you're not careful. Yeah, that, uh, that looked like a play out of Campbell County's book there. It sure did. The score, McMinn County 23, Campbell County 7. Certainly didn't need that. No, definitely not. It's uh, disappointing to say the least. Now we need three touchdowns to win this thing. We're going to run a two-point conversion one more time as he's in, as that was a quarterback keeper by Hester. And it's going to be 25 to 7 in favor of McMinn County. We're going to take a step away for a commercial break. You're listening to WLAF and the Doyle Tire Sports Network. This is Skeeter with Doyle's Tire Shop. We've been in the same spot since the 1990s. We continue serving you with the same friendly service and top-notch name brand tires as my dad, Doyle, did when he first opened up. This is Lester Pearls for girls in downtown La Folle, and this is Jennifer. We're here to serve. We would love to be your personal shopper. We have ladies' collection of clothing in here along with little girls' collection. So let us shop for you. Come and see us Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays in downtown La Follette. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name's Les Martin along with Mr. Brian Allen. Folks, you know, Campbell County has got plenty of time to come back in this football game. We've got to make sure that we shut them out the rest of the game. Oh, absolutely. There's yeah. no field goal. There's no <laughs> two-point conversion. There's no extra point. There's mm -hmm. no touchdown. we got to stop them. No more points. I agree. Sullins to kick off from his own 40. Back deep is Owens and Ferguson standing inside the five-yard line. Sullins approaches the football. It's going to be a high end-over-end end kick. It's going to come down at the 10-yard line. Up to or a five, up to the 10, all the way up to the 20, across the 20. They're going to mark him down at the 24-yard line, make it the 23-yard line. It's going to be first down and 10 for Campbell County, traveling from our right to our left. 131 left to go in this third quarter. The score is the Cherokees, 25, Campbell County, 7. Nothing spectacular there on the on the return, but I do like the way Owens runs. He's uh, he's up the field, you know. It's yes. there's not much dancing, none whatsoever. He sees an opening, he takes it. You know, I would like to see Ferguson in the backfield. Yeah, I, I me too. But he did it when he had a cast on. <laughs> yeah, I would really like to see him in the background. We got Will. I mean, in the backfield, we got Will Lester in the backfield now. Motions to this near side, passes away. It's going to be over the head of Shanks. It looked like that ball got tipped. I could be wrong. Hmm. I couldn't tell. It falls incomplete. It's going to bring up a second down and ten for the Cherokee. I mean, for Campbell County and the Cherokees playing a four-three defense. Four down linemen. Sometimes they'll sneak a fifth one in there, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it's been four down linemen. Yep. Shotgun formation, empty backfield, two receivers to the far side, three receivers to this near side for your Cougars. Calling out the signals is Hensley with six seconds on the play clock. Here's the snap. Snap's good. Pressure just gets rid of it and gets hit. I think it had to affect his throw because it, it was off target intended for Miller. And Miller had nobody out there beside of him. Yeah. I... I saw the issue there. I mean, the lineman just whiffed. I mean, he just, just missed him. It's going to be third down and 10 for your Cougars. Four receivers to this near side, single receiver to the far side. You got Lester, Jones, Shanks, and Ferguson in that order to this near side. Miller to the far side. The safeties is going to back up one more time. Rolling to this near side is... Hensley, pass is away. Pass is going to be complete. No, nope, they're going to say incomplete. Incomplete. I don't know how that referee saw that, but that official, I mean. 
I don't know, but I like seeing uh, Will Esther out there making a big block. You know, that's how I'd like to have seen that all year. You know, I mean, not that he hasn't done that. He, he does his job. I'm just saying he doesn't get an opportunity very often. He brings up a fourth and ten for Campbell County as Shanks will go drop back deep to punt one more time with 116 left to go in this third quarter. Hensley back deep. Looks like Cherokee's got 12 men on the field. Here's a punt. What a driving punt over the head at the 30, down My to the goodness. 20, down inside the 15, all the way down to the 13-yard line. Wow. <laughs> that was a great punt. McMinn County had 12 players on the field. Not surprised. <laughs> Not one penalty flag. Almost positively had 12 on there. I could be wrong. Brian, if you've seen that, text us and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be first down and 10 at the 13 yard line for McMinn County traveling from our left to our right. We've got to stop them here, Brent. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, mean, this is a, this is, this do is or do die. Or die. <laughs> Absolutely. Shotgun formation, two receivers to this near side, single receiver to the far side. It's going to be a quarterback keeper up the middle and he's not going to go too far except for about six yards across the 20 to the 21 yard line. And it's going to bring up a second down and short. It looked like he was going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage, but got away from the tack would-be tackler. And Hester picks up seven yards. Yeah, strong run. Second down and three for McMinn County. Two receivers near side. Two receivers to the far side. Miller in the backfield. Calling out the signals is Hester. Here's the snap. Handoff up the middle. That's All fast. the way up to the 36-yard line. is going to be tackled there by Owens, but not before he picks up a first down. He picks up 12 yards and a first down. Apparently, his cramp is all better. Apparently. <laughs> He's only about 5'4", 130, but he is quick. He's fast. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. The score, McMinn County 25, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLF and the Dole Tires Sports Network. Whether you're a contractor or you're just handling a project around the house or farm, CNO Metal Sales has the best prices in the tri-state. Metal roofing custom cuts as well as delivery are available from CNO Metal. Be sure and ask us about our lifetime warranty on metal. Matt Klein can handle your big or small jobs from one piece of metal to a hundred. Select from 22 colors. CNO Metal Sales is right behind O'Reilly's Auto Parts in Middlesboro. Just take a left at the first stoplight and CNL is on the right. See or call Matt at 606-248-5 this is Matthew Klein, former Cougar number 42. Come see me at CNL Metal. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name's Les Martin, along with Brent Allen. The score starting to this fourth quarter is McMinn County 25, Campbell County 7. You know, I'm going to put it like this. And this is certainly not meant towards anybody. <laughs> But when you've got a Campbell County Cougar team that could light it up for 34 plus points a game, you get accustomed to seeing that. Yep. Shotgun formation for Hester. Two receivers to this near side, two receivers to the far side. Miller in the background, calling out the signals. Here's the snap, looking downfield, passes away. Almost intercepted there by the big boy, Will Lester. So it's going to bring up a second down and 10. It stops the clock. We've got to stop. We cannot allow them to get at midfield. we got to yeah, stop yeah. them before that. Yeah, and uh, the opportunities like that, you have to uh, you have to capitalize. capitalize. I'm, I know Matt Price is probably yelling his brains out at the moment. You know, say, catch the ball, you know. And, I mean, it's easier said than done, but that's what we need is, uh, is a big play to turn this around. Two receivers near side for McMinn County. Here's a... Hand off one more time to Miller up the middle. Looks like he's going to break it. it. Down to the 20, down to the 10. Nobody's going to catch him. There's no penalty flags on the play. And it's going to be a touchdown for McMinn County. The score 31 to 7 in favor of McMinn County. 
Hester shotgun formation. Now we'll move everybody over and we'll have a traditional extra point kick. They went for two twice and they've got it both times. Sullins to attempt the point after. Here's the snap, good snap, kicks up, kicks good. The score, McMinn County 32, Campbell County 7. You certainly have to make sure, Brent, that you score five more touchdowns now. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it just keeps getting worse. You're looking at me all serious like that. I, I mean, it's not looking good, Les. I'm going to be straight. I, I mean, I love I my agree. Cougars, but I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's, uh, that would be quite a comeback, um, you know. We've got 11.47 to do it in, and I know – if we can't get a stop on defense, it ain't going to matter how many times we score. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to watch. I mean, I hate it. I hate it for these kids. They've had a good year. And, you know, uh, we're going to be losing a lot of a lot of great seniors this year. And I, just, I hate it for them as well. You know, I was really hoping to to move up in the in the playoffs. And, you know, like you said, there's always that possibility. But I'm not, I'm not giving up yet. I'm just saying it's going to be real hard. The lot. It's slowly dimming. It's fading fast. <laughs> but I love these Cougars, folks. Sullins in to kick off. Approaches the football. High end over end kick. It's going to be in the end zone, nine yards deep. As that's going to be a first down and 10 for Campbell County at their own 20 yard line. Uh, that kicker will be playing on Saturday somewhere. He's, yes, he's he will. Leg. Yes, he does have a leg for sure. It's one of those situations to where. We need to find somebody, and Eli Austin has done a great job, don't get me wrong. But we have had good kickers in the past, but just haven't had the the length right. of the kick. Yeah. Three receivers near side, two receivers to the far side. Is now it's time to uncork it. You just got to <laughs> start. Let it rip. Yeah, just let it rip. Here's the snap, looking, passes away, passes complete to Jones. Jones runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line, 26-yard line. He's going to be picking up six yards. It's going to be second down and four for the Cougars. Little uh, little downfield block in there looked good. That's, uh, that's the way it's supposed to work. Yes, sir. Also, folks, make sure you, you need to work out. Trust me, Isaac's 24-7 gym is where you need to go. Also, we got players of the game coming up after the T Cat with the T Cat Cougar wrap up show, of course. Here's a snap. Looking good. Passes away. There's what I'm talking about. Turn it up. All the way up to the 36 yard line is going to be first down. That was over the head of the linebackers in front of the safeties. Yeah. Nice, nice catch by Miller there. Good safe catch. Didn't really have a lot of place to go, um, but good solid catch. That's a Hensley's higher first down, folks, with two locations to serve you, one in Huntsville and one in La Follette. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage is your Cougars. Calling out the signals is Hensley. Here's the snap, looking downfield. Press is across the middle to Lester. Lester, uh, uh, it looked like that Nunez didn't want anything to do with Lester <laughs> as he went to the ground. Yeah, they, they, they've met before and uh, Lester put a wall upon him. Yes, he did. Folks, Jasper Body Shop Collision, founded in 1960 by the former Cougar, or Eagle football star, I'm sorry, the late Harry Burton. When you have a collision, call on Avery and Don Burton at Jasper Body Shop. Calling out the signals is Hensley. Here's the pass. Passes away. It's going to be to Ferguson as he's going to let it rip. Ferguson, that it should appears. be a pass interference, and there's the fl flag. As he held Ferguson, Ferguson was trying to get back to the ball. Yep. I was waiting for that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you got to say that he was, he was covered pretty well, and that's because of that deep safety. I mean, if it was, uh, if he wasn't so deep, Ferguson runs by him. You know. Sure. But the fact that he was so deep allowed him to uh, stay with him somewhat. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty. That moves the football all the way up to the 40-yard line of the Cherokees. And it's going to be first down and 10 for Campbell County. That's a Hensley Sire first down. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage comes your Cougars. Three receivers near side, two receivers to the far side. 
10.31 left to go in this football game. Passes away to Ferguson. Ferguson's got some blockers up there. And Ferguson lays the shoulder down. I don't know why Jones didn't pick up that <laughs> gentleman before he got to Ferguson. But he, he was running downfield. <laughs> so it's going to be 10.25 left to go in the fourth quarter. The score, McMinn County 32, Campbell County 7. We need four touchdowns. That's be 35 points, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. We need four touchdowns in 10 minutes. So take that fifth one away. Here's <laughs> the snap, easier. low snap. Passes away, wide open is Lester. Lester, what play? a move. What a move as Lester absolutely runs over a couple of would-be tacklers. Wow, he took a shot. Yeah, I couldn't see. I didn't see how that happened. I just saw him flying through the air. He landed on his head, to his top of his head. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, I agree. Fagan's in on the tackle for McMinn County. It's going to be Hensley's tire first down. Lester now will sp split out to the far side. Three receivers near side. Two receivers to the far side. 9-15 counting down. I feel an onside kick coming on after this touchdown right here. <laughs> Here's the snap. Quarterback keeper. Oh, my goodness. He goes nowhere. They just run right through our offensive line like they wasn't even standing up. I agree. At some point in time, you have got to reach out and hold somebody <laughs> to protect something. that quarterback. Yeah, whatever it takes. If you are beat that bad, you got to hold them. You don't want to. Do you don't want to get your quarterback killed. Mm -hmm. And he got a shot that time, folks. Hensley got a shot. It's going to be second down and 14 with 9:10 left to go in this fourth quarter. Here's the snap, rolling to this near side. Passes away, off the fingertips of Shank. Falls incomplete as he looked upfield before he had the football once again. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate uh, description. <laughs> so now it's going to be third down and 14. The ball is at the 20-yard line. You know, I go back to to my complaints of the uh, quarterback keeper. You know, we've we've seen something a wrinkle we haven't seen before. They rarely throw the ball to the running back. It's just a safety valve usually. But they've thrown it to Lester a couple of times. Things are starting to work. Why run the the draw then? You know, I mean, the, or the quarterback draw. I don't know. It's going to be third and 14 yards to go for a first down. This is two down territory, no way out of it. Here's the snap. Much better protection, passes away. It's going to be, it says it's intercepted. Let's see what it will be. It's going to be intercepted. It's going to be intercepted on the far side of the field. It was intended for Miller and that is going to be first down and 10 at the five-yard line for the McMinn County Cherokees. Man, the, I got uh, a frog in my throat. <laughs> Bad. The, Cherokee has the, the Cherokees have the football first and 10 at the five-yard line. If, uh, if we can somehow eke out another touchdown pass, uh, Hensley will, will have set the new single season record for touchdown passes he's for currently 40? he's currently tied with ethan um, jeffers, jeffers. <laughs> with 39 that's correct lester in on the tackle that's going to bring up a second down in five pickup of five for mcmahon county 835 and counting down as most everybody, or I say most everybody, is starting to ease out of the stadium on this side, some of the fans. Hand off to Miller one more time up the middle across the 15. And it looks like that maybe Campbell County had the football game and Jamal Wright is looking like he's wanting to throw a punch. Nah, he jerked his arm. Somebody was holding his arm. He jerked his arm away from it. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure they're going to call something different. They'll probably see it like I just announced it. Be my luck. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, it's going against the, both of them. So yeah. that's good. That's good. I was wrong on that, Jamal Wright. I do apologize, buddy. It's going to be first down and 10. Cherokees traveling from our right to our left. 
It is getting chippy out there, let me tell you. We've got a timeout on the field. Let's see what this call will be. There's the line judge and the referee is. If that was the second one, oh. Sideline warning against McMinn County one more time. As now we're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them, folks. The score, McMinn County 32, Campbell County 7. You'll listen to the WLF and the Dual Tire Sports Network. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. Grace Rehab is the only one that has a pool. It has really helped all of us that have been coming for quite a while. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. The score is McMinn County 32, Campbell County 7. You know, I, I'm just going to tell you, we've been in this ball game for a long time. And it's just gotten out of hand here the end of, towards the end of the third quarter in the fourth quarter. And I would have thanked I would have thought that if we would have made some of those plays and scored a touchdown or two more, I'm not thinking it would be in the situation that we are now. We would have took some of that momentum that McMinn County had. I agree. Here's a snap. It's a high snap. Handoff to over the far side of the line. Lester gets away from Lester. He's now traveling down the far sideline, and Miller forces him out of bounds. That was Miller on the run and Miller for Campbell County <laughs> on the stop. It's going to be first down McMinn County. So it's going to be first down and 10. They're still in Cherokee territory with 8.03 left to go in this fourth quarter. First down and 10 McMinn County traveling from our right to our left. Two receivers near side, single receiver to the far side. Handoff, nope, quarterback keeper to the near side. Got some blockers up to the 40 and going to fall down there at the 46-yard line, and that's going to be enough for another that's Cherokee scary. first down. I mean, they're picking it up in bunches now. Yeah, that, uh, that quarterback's in very good physical condition. I mean, he still looks like he's got the same amount in the tank that he had uh, at kickoff. Yeah, I agree. Going to be first down and 10 for Cherokee at the 44-yard line, traveling from our right to our left, 736 and counting down. Looks like they're probably just going to take off some time off this clock and get out of this football game. Here's the snap. High snap handoff to this near side. Down the sideline and finally going to be run out of bounds there by Noah Smith. Noah Smith runs him out of bounds at the 36-yard line of Campbell County. That guy can get down that sideline pretty quick, can't he? Yeah, he's quick. He's, he's, he's their Ferguson, apparently. <laughs> So now it's going to be a first down once again. Keegan Cowan out. Jamal Wright coming in. So now it's going to be a first and 10 inside Campbell County Territory at 720. Left to go in this football game. The score 32 for McMinn County, 7 for Campbell County. Here's the snap, it's gonna be a pass play. Passes away, it's gonna be complete. Juggling catch, and he picks it up at the 18 yard line of Campbell County. I'm glad he juggled it or he'd been in the end zone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So it's gonna be seven minutes and counting down. First and 10 from the 18 yard line of Campbell County is the McMinn County Cherokees. Calling out the signal, looking for the snap. It's a high snap, handoff up the middle. He's gonna be hit there and gonna be stopped. He's gonna be stopped there by Ferguson and as well as Muncie as well. There's a host of folks there as now we have a Cougar on the field injured. We'll take a break with them. The score, McMinn County 32, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLF and the Dole Tires Sports Network.
Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. You work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. The score is McMinn County 32, Campbell County 7. There is 6.33 left to go in this football game. But Campbell County certainly has had their opportunities. I'm not going to say they haven't, and we just could not capitalize. And, and we got to give credit to McMinn County as well, just like we've got to give credit to Campbell County on their, some of their defensive stands as well. But it's certainly been pretty much all McMinn County on, <laughs> on the scoring. Yeah, I mean, it has, and uh, I never would have believed that it would be down, or, you know, only have seven points uh, with six minutes left in the game. Um, things just didn't didn't bounce our way and uh, McMahon County played a good solid well disciplined game and uh, they, they block well and, and uh, you know when you're when you're blocking well and you've got somebody that can run like that quarterback it's a uh, it's tough to stop it sure is and of course Campbell County has gotten herself into some positions uh, especially uh, in the first half on the second and third and long uh, second and long third and long it, it kind of took them out of their uh, actual plans of uh, plays to call. Right, right. And of course, turnovers have hurt us as well. Sure. 631 and counting down in the football game. The score is McMean County 32, Campbell County 7. Hester calling out the signals. Hands off. Nope, it's going to be a jump pass to Hensley. Hensley's in the end zone. I see no need for that, but oh well. <laughs> hey, if it's, the beef oh, look here. There's a fight. <laughs> That's looks no, like no, Jamal. I mean, uh, Wright's breaking them up. It was uh, it was some other guys there. And I was just going to say Jamal looked like he was hot. <laughs> yeah, he, it looked to be like he was breaking up. There was a couple of linemen wadded up down there. And, uh, yeah. Wow. It's one of those situations to where when it's ugly, it's gracious. ugly. Yeah. And you don't want it to end like this. You want to hold your head up high, whether you win, lose, or draw, and you just want to walk off as proud young men. And, you know, and let's face it, McMean County has been plugging at these guys, poking, poking, poking. Oh, yeah. You can only poke the bear so long before <laughs> the bear starts to fight back. That's true. So I'm not going to say it's Campbell County's fault by no means. We've got a, a point after attempt by Sullins. The score is 38 for McMinn County, Campbell County seven. So Sullins in to kick the extra point. Here's the snap, it's a high snap, kick is up. Looks like the kick may be good, it is. The score, McMinn County 39, Campbell County seven with 6.17 left to go in the fourth quarter. You'll listen to WLF and the Doors Tire Sports Network. There are two types of hot water heaters, thankless and tankless. The thankless kind work like this. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. Hold off on that. I'm hopping in the shower. Renai tankless water heaters work this way. I'm throwing in a load of laundry. No problem. You get an endless supply of hot water even for multiple tasks at the same time. With a natural gas water heater from PCUD, you get hot water twice as fast as same size electric and for about half the cost. Chop down your hot water energy cost hundreds of dollars a year with PCUD in La Follette or Rocky Top. Renai Tankless Water Heaters, the hot way to heat water. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name's Les Martin, along with Brent Allen. It's gotten ugly. <laughs> yeah, in more ways than one. <laughs> yes, sir. More ways than one. The score is McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. Certainly, we are a better football team than what the scoreboard is showing. And we are a better football team than what we performed here tonight. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. Um, at least we, we certainly had have had the uh, opportunity to do so. Sullins set to kick off. 
with 17 seconds. He's going to approach the football. It's going to be a high end over end kick. It's going to go in the end zone. There for a second, I thought it was going to be an onside kick as they had their yeah. guys lined up on the far side. So it's going to be first and 10 for Campbell County at the 20-yard line, traveling from our left to our right. You know, I, if I'm Coach Price, I'm airing it out. I don't even care. Yeah, I agree. I'm I mean, gonna I'm gonna air it out and see if I can't get a record for this young quarterback. No one needs a, a touchdown a minute, we can win this thing. Sure. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Absolutely. We got three timeouts. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. It's a rolling clock now because there's thirty points. Low snap passes away. It's gonna be complete to Shanks. Man, I, I I, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I hate to see that first step backwards after you catch a pass. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it works to your favor. You know, a lot of times. Most of the time it don't. You're, yeah, but, uh, you know, if you've got somebody closing on you and you make that step back, a lot of times you'll make a miss, but uh, that, that one didn't work out. It's going to be second down and five for Campbell County. And I know he's doing what he feels like he needs to do i'm not down there and and if that's what he feels like he needs to do so be it but you never want to see your guy go backwards My it's going to be intercepted one more time off the fingertips of jones it's going to be a intercepted by mcmen county here comes the flags yep there's the penalty flags again let's see what this will be this time as the referee is over there. You know, two or three of these interceptions was not Hensley's fault. Not at all. No. But it's going to go on the stats and it hurts and it's, uh, it's too bad. Personal foul against McMinn County. That will back him up 15 yards. 15 yards against McMinn County. That will back them up 15 yards from the spot of the foul. The spot of the foul is somewhere around the 25-yard line. It puts the ball down at the 37-yard line. So it was at the 24. Well, I'm a little lost. <laughs> 18. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere in that neighborhood. I can't count. <laughs> So it's going to be first and 10 for McMinn County. Two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Here's a snap, hands off up the middle. Man, he's fast too. All the way down to the 20 yard line, gets hit there by Jones, fumbles there the football, go. and Campbell County comes up with it. Campbell County came up with the football, and it looks like Dorton in on the re recovery. recovery. Yeah, yeah. Somebody stripped it. I was I didn't catch who it was, but uh, whoever it was did a nice job. Jones was right there. I don't know if it was him or not. Though. I thought it was Jones, but I could be wrong. We're going to stop the clock momentarily. Nope, they're going to continue to run it. <laughs> he blew not. the whistle. <laughs> yeah, roll the clock, he's saying. So they had to have a discussion whether or not to roll the clock, and the clock never stopped. Yeah, the whole it was time. rolling the whole time. They told him to stop, so. They got it down, Pat. These officials finally have ended the football game. They, they've got it pretty much straightened out. Got it figured out now. Got it figured out now, buddy. They'll be good for the next round. Shotgun formation for Hensley. Here's the snap. It's a low snap. Passes away. Passes complete to Miller. He went backwards, dude. Could yes, turn it he up, did. Miller. Almost did not get a first down. Hensley's tire first down. Two locations to serve you. One in Huntsville, one in La Follette. He's, uh, he's just trying to make something happen, I guess. Sure. I can understand that. Two receivers to this near side, Lester and Miller. Three receivers to the far side. Hensley, shotgun formation. Calling out the signals. Everybody's set. Here's the snap. The snap's still low. Here's the pass complete to Lester. Lester's going to run all the way down to the 40. Two yard line, they're going to mark him down at the 40. And let's see what this is going to be. It's going to be blocking the back on Campbell County. 
So that's going to back him up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So the ball will be at the 30, or excuse me, the 29 yard line and still going to remain second down. And the clock continues. And the clock continues to roll. There's another <laughs> penalty flag. Another penalty flag, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against Campbell County. That will be another 15-yard penalty tacked onto that. That's what I don't like to see. Yeah, there's a lot that I don't like to see. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what was going on. We had a couple of players uh, down. Jawing. Jawing. That, I mean, talking to the ref. I mean, I don't know what they were yeah. saying, but. Uh, I agree. Got them a flag. I agree. It's going to be first down in forever, 32 yards to be exact. Shotgun formation for Hensley. Here's the snap. Rolls to the far side. Passes away. Pass is going to Short be under. intercepted once again to the 30, down to the 20, all the way down inside the 15-yard line and tackled there. And that's going to be first and 10, McMinn County. Just getting plain sloppy now. That's a tough throw to make, though, on the roll when you're rolling out to get enough arm on yeah, it, it to is, get it downfield. But, but he's, he's got the arm. He's done it before. It's just, uh, I don't know, something just didn't work. <laughs> so now it's going to be first and 10 with 52, 50 seconds left in this football game. It's 927. I figured it was going to be 56 degrees at 10 o'clock, so by the time we get out of here, it'll be 56 degrees. <laughs> That's the important stuff there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Think, leave out the important stuff. 31 seconds and County down. Shotgun formation for McMinn County. Here's the snap. They're just going to take a knee. That's going to be the end of the football game. The score. McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLF and the Doyle's Tires Sports Network. T-Cat is a cat fan. T-Cat at Jacksboro loves the Cougars. Your Tennessee College of Applied Technology is the leader in technical education and industry training. T-Cat makes higher education accessible to more Tennesseans. Select from a career in administrative office technology, computer information technology, cosmetology, residential, commercial, industrial electricity, machine tool technology, pharmacy technician, power sports technology, practical nursing, computer information technology, welding technology, Start on your road to success now. Connect to tcatjacksboro.edu. Quality and Clayton go hand in hand. That's quality constructed homes from Clayton Homes. The staff at Clayton Homes, located right here at home in Campbell County at Jacksboro, is ready to help you through all the steps of home ownership, from selecting the home that's just right for you to putting the keys in your hand. Since 1956, Clayton Homes has been making dreams come true. See the home folks about your new dream home from Clayton Homes, 110 North Street near Jacksboro Middle School. Call or just come on by. BP is back. Rice Oil has brought back BP to Big O's Get and Go and Cumberland Crossing BP. BP provides the energy that keeps Campbell County and America moving and helps drive the U.S. economy. Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco. From Rice Oil, La Follette. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in the surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing. 423-566-6561. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. You know, we were talking about things that we didn't like to see during the football game, and I'm sure Coach Price and the coaching staff and the players didn't like to see that either. But it, when you know you've got a football team that can play and that can score 
and play and score better than what they did tonight, sure, we as fans do get frustrated. I mean, it's just an everyday thing. Frustration, the players get frustrated. The coaches get frustrated. But you know what? We shot our own self in the foot tonight. Yeah, yeah. many times, um, you know, so many opportunities missed. Um, it's just a... It's just been a tough night. I mean, it's a, it's a tough way to end of the year. You hate to lose. You hate to lose first round of the playoff again. Um, it, it's just uh, it's tough. You know, and these poor seniors are having to deal with it. You know, they went through it last year. Um, watch, watch their seniors uh, be so uh, distraught and upset about going out in the first round. But, um, you know, you can always look at the right side. We we did make it to the playoffs. I mean, it's sure. years ago that was that was not a not an option most of the time. Um, um, since Coach Price has been here, we've at least made it to the playoffs a lot, and uh, that's a that's a plus. And it's just something to build on. You know, you hope that uh, you hope that we have a lot of players come back. Sure, folks, you listen to WLF and the Doyle Tire Sports Network. The final score: McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. T-Cat is a cat fan. T-Cat at Jacksboro loves the Cougars. Your Tennessee College of Applied Technology is the leader in technical education and industry training. T-Cat makes higher education accessible to more Tennesseans. Select from a career in administrative office technology, computer information technology, cosmetology, residential, commercial, industrial electricity, machine tool technology, pharmacy technician, power sports technology, practical nursing, computer information technology, welding technology, Start on your road to success now. Connect to tcatjacksboro.edu. Citizens Bank is a locally owned and operated bank serving communities in East Tennessee. The bank was established in 1934 with three guiding principles at its foundation. Assurance of safety to depositors, a high standard of service to customers, and a genuine desire to serve the community. These principles are the core factor in the success that has lasted over 85 years and grown Citizens Bank to the renowned financial institution it is today. To learn more about Citizens Bank, visit CitizensBank24.com. I'm Tracy Lobertini with Alco Builders and Realty. Take a look at what we have for you today. Thank you, Tracy. This one-level home, located at 322 Pinecrest Road, offers three large bedrooms, two full baths, and an office-slash-sleeping room. Updated and move-in ready, it offers recessed lighting, shaker cabinets, stainless steel appliances, gas stove, and tile floors. The primary bedroom is large with vaulted ceilings and has an in-suite bath attached. The bathroom has a large walk-in closet, a soaking tub, and a walk-in tile shower. The exterior has a long covered porch to take in the beautiful views. This home is currently priced at $159.9. If you're looking to buy or to sell, my name's Tracy Lobertini, 423-562-0638. Just give me a call. Hello Cougar fans, I'm former Cougar Randy Heatherly. Gray Insurance is your local, independent insurance agency. We'll work with you to insure your home, auto, business, and life to keep everything you value protected. For more information, visit grayfoxins.com or call 423-562-3346. Gray Insurance on the big four-lane highway in La Follette. Same building, same outstanding service for more than 60 years. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Brent Allen. You know... Cherokees had 469 total offense. Campbell County had 215. You know what? It's like a, reading the book. When you open up and you see those two numbers, you pretty much know who come out on top. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good indicator, yeah, no matter how you look at it. Just tough night, man. I mean, I knew in the first series, you know, when I uh, had a couple of drop balls early in that first series and uh, had to end up hunting, I, I was concerned. You know, I was hoping that that was just a playoff jitters kind of thing. Yeah. but. Uh, but it never really seemed – we never got it going like we usually do, do, right? Yeah. And just didn't get hot. And uh, credit to McMahon County, though, they played a heck of a game. We're waiting on Coach Price to come up to do a uh, Coach Price interview here in just a few minutes. He's still talking to some of the kids. As some of the kids, it's uh, seniors. It's, uh, it's going to be tough to walk off this field because it'll be the last time they walk off of a high school football field. And, and Campbell County uh, has never won a playoff game on the road. Never. Right. So, with that being said, uh, it's hard telling what Coach Price is telling those young men. I'm, I'm sure there's probably some tears and things that's going on. But, you know, it's um, 
all good things must come to an end. Unfortunately, we had to end our playoff run here tonight at McMinn County. The final score is McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLAF and the Doyle's Tire Sports Network. The folks at Hensley Tire and Service welcome you by their new location at the corner of Beach and Indiana Avenue in La Follette. Hensley's Tire and Service provides road service going to customers stuck on the highway somewhere with tire or engine trouble. Servicing tractor trailer trucks is another service offered along with mechanical work, alignment, and lifts. 423-563-TIRE. That's 563-8473. Terry's Pharmacy delivers. Whether it's at their drive throughs at the curbside, or at your doorstep, Terry's is delivering countywide. Don't want to get out of the house? Terry's will safely deliver to your door. Anxious about your pharmacy not having a drive through Terry's will seamlessly help you transfer your prescriptions so you can drive through at one of Terry's convenient locations, La Follette and Jacksboro. At the drive throughs drop off your prescription and wait in the parking lot for your phone call when it's ready. Have a question? Want to transfer your prescription? Just call Terry's, 423-5. 562-4928. 562-4928. No matter where you are in Campbell County, you're liable to see us on deliveries. Just honk and wave. At United Cumberland Bank, our number one focus is people. You see, our employees are our largest shareholders, and they are dedicated to ensure your financial success. And one of the biggest financial decisions you can make is a home loan, and we will help every step of the way. Buying a home is a huge decision. So is choosing the right loan. Lender. Find out more at unitedcumberland.com. United Cumberland Bank. Generations of trust. Neighbors you know. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. All loans subject to credit approval. Hi, I am Bailey Ball from A Fall at Multiply, and I am here with my brother Brody. See us for PPC Pie. See us for Rebar. Oh, we deliver Rebar too. We carry septic chambers and septic tanks. We carry hydraulic oil and motor oil. Does anybody need a little brother? See if all it might suffice. The Nova Medical Group is making it easier to see a primary care provider in the La Follette area quickly. Schedule an appointment online anytime at tonovalafollettepcp.com. And uh, obviously it's something to look forward to next year. Uh, we're losing a lot of great receivers. You're hoping, of course, that uh, these young guys have been paying attention and uh, the receivers coming back next year work extra hard to, uh, to help make him look good. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's the thing with this uh, Coach Justin Price offense. When it's time, everybody will get their shot. Let's see what they can do. That's it. You know, everybody's got to earn their position, and uh, and that's what they'll have to do. Absolutely. Folks, we're going to step away for a commercial break. The score, final score, is McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLAF and the Dulles Tire Sports Network. The First National Bank, we put you first. <laughs> Good. I didn't catch his breath there. Decisions. Our First National Bank members are part of the Campbell County community. They not only live and work here, they're involved here. FMB's experienced hometown lenders make the decisions right here with a quick turnaround. Remember us when it comes to local lending and local decisions. Located at 2408 Jacksboro Pike, 423-566-5326. Your family, your future, your bank. First National Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go Here's to the grown-ups. Your car is now your office. Stage, nursery. Sorry, Erie Insurance offers products that lots of other companies don't. That's a big deal. And it's a good deal, too. And with Erie, you get your own independent agent. Not a giant corporate call center or some online robot. You meet with a real person like this. Give us a call at 562-2112. Check us out on the web at eehill.com. Or just stop by and see us at 701 West Central Avenue, La Follette. Erie Insurance. La Follette Utilities Board continues to be a locally owned public utility that anticipates and meets the community's needs at the lowest achievable rates. The mission of LUB is to provide our customers with reliable, economical, and friendly service in a continuous effort to enhance the quality of life in our community. 
Caring Neighbors, sponsored by La Follette Utilities, is an emergency assistance fund offering temporary help for paying utility bills. You can be a caring neighbor by donating a dollar or two each month added to your LUB bill. You're on the move every day. You're mobile, and so is Community Trust Bank. Now you've got one-touch access to your accounts. No need to remember or update passwords. Make a deposit with a click, not a pen. No deposit slip and no line. And get that morning cup of joe without the hassle, without the wait. Community Trust Bank is dedicated to making your banking experience secure, fast, and easy. Don't wait. Go mobile with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Sick today, seen today, here at Cumberland Gap Medical. Hello, this is APRN Amanda Brown. At Cumberland Gap Medical, we can take care of you and your family. From the toddlers to the seniors, we have one of the area's most affordable cash pay programs. Walk in now to be seen or call for an appointment. 423-201-9799. Cumberland Gap Medical is beside Stoplight 10 on East Central at Cumberland Avenue. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin along with Coach Price. Uh, as he stands beside of me, we were talking prior to going on the air there's some things that probably need to happen tonight that would probably change the way McMinn County played defense, correct? Yeah, you know, you know, their philosophy was to try to keep everything in front of them. They weren't going to let us have our explosive plays that we've been able to do most of the year. And, you know, it's a good plan. I think early on, though, we, were, we you know, checked down to some drag routes and hit them on some screen, uh, a running back screen early. And uh, so kind of different, uh, you know, most of the time this year we've been, it's been a lot of explosive plays. Uh, you know, I think tonight it was offensively it was going about us having, you know, longer drives and, you know, maybe having 10 play drives or whatever to score. And, you know, we did on one. Uh, and a couple times we drove down again, but we just couldn't finish drives. And, uh, you know, just really the last two weeks offensively we've not played as like we did the first nine games and, uh, you know, at times. And, and so we, we those are areas that, uh, you know, you, you want to be playing your best this time of year. Uh, and, and we've played two really good football teams the last two weeks, and we know that. Uh, but, you know, tonight really is about, you know, when you lose in the playoffs, you, you almost just immediately go and reflect on the season. You yeah. Know, you, you think about what our players have accomplished to, be, to get to this point. Sure. I told them, I, and I could be wrong, but I said, you know, there have been ten teams make the playoffs in Campbell County history since 1975. Yes. <laughs> That's a long time. And there's Absolutely. only 10 teams that have done that. And they're one of them. They need to be proud of it, and we're proud of them. And I told them, you know, you think back to that first game against Chattanooga Central where we lost at home and didn't play great. But the way that we responded from that game, yes. the improvements we made all season to get to this point, you're just, just really proud of our football team. Well, I know that that young quarterback you've got coming back, 39 touchdowns for the year. Uh, 16 interceptions. Of course, he had five here tonight. Three of them, just a freak play. Yeah. If that goes the other way, Coach, things are different on the scoreboard. I think the momentum will be taken from McMinn County on some of those plays and would certainly help you and especially the defense play a little bit better. Yeah, I think, you know, in the second half, our defense got a quick three and out. Yes. I think it may be in the same drive. You know, we hit – Devin finally got behind him uh, and him and – Hensley, I mean, how many times have they connected on that? Sure. And we just missed it, and the guy made an interception. And, uh, you know, that would have, I think, got us within three points at that point. Yes. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, it's just a few little plays here and there. But that's what happens when you play really good teams. You know, uh, you know, it's just a couple plays that are the difference, even when the score is 39-7. to But there's only there's really a couple plays that could completely change that. And, uh you know, we made some good plays tonight. We just came up a few plays short, but uh, it really is – it's been a fun year. You know, we've had a lot of fun games. There have been a lot of close ones, and we've won some of those close ones, and we yeah. lost a couple. But, uh, you know, Landon, he, he's had a phenomenal year. I mean, arguably for, for as a sophomore quarterback, I mean, just it's really phenomenal what he was able to accomplish. And, and that comes with a lot of good, you know, senior receivers that I know we'll miss and uh, – just a good, a good offense, and obviously we weren't at our best the last two games. But uh, just you know, nights like tonight are hard. They're bitter. You know, it's you, you never, you never want it to come to an end. Sure. People invest so much. Our players invest in 
so much into a football season. So when right. it comes to an end, it, it's always hard. Um, but it's also a good time to reflect back in, in what we were able to accomplish this season. Absolutely. Coach, I'm going to let you go back down there and reflect with some of those seniors before they get off the field. As you can see them standing down on the field with their parents and teammates, I'm going to let you go join them as well, Coach. Thanks, Les. I appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Folks, the final score here at McMinn County is McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. You're listening to WLAF and the Dole's Tires Sports Network. At Grace Rehab, we work with all ages to get you back to your optimum. We utilize a variety of specialized equipment and exercises that range from physical therapy to speech therapy and even specialized aquatic classes offered daily. Grace Rehab is the only one that has a pool. It has really helped all of us that have been coming for quite a while. They've got a great staff here. They've been a huge help to me. Uh, when I leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Grace Rehab in La Follette. We want to help you feel your best. Hello, this is Lisa Caudill from People's Bank of the South. You work all day, you attend after school activities, and you don't have time to stop by the bank. Sound familiar? Our schedules are just as busy as yours. There aren't enough hours in the day for us at People's Bank of the South either. The answer is online banking, bill pay, and mobile app that allows you to take a picture and deposit a check. Now you can bank 24 hours a day. Check in with People's Bank and simplify your life. People's Bank of the South, member FDIC. We specialize in quality metal roofing and quality shingles, and of course, all at reasonable prices. We're your locally owned roofing company, we're Valley Roofing. We're located right here in La Follette in the old Woodson Shopping Center. You select the roof and we'll install it. Here at Valley Roofing, we're insured and bring more than 25 years of experience to your job site. Whether you live right here in town or in the surrounding community, we'll be there. We're Valley Roofing, 423-566-6561. BP is back. Rice Oil has brought back BP to Big O's Get and Go and Cumberland Crossing BP. BP provides the energy that keeps Campbell County and America moving and helps drive the U.S. economy. Amoco is back on the road. That's right, Amoco is back to bring you the quality fuel America has trusted for more than 100 years. Find Amoco right now at West End Amoco. Amoco, backed by the longest standing fuels guarantee in the nation. BP and Amoco. From Rice Oil, La Follette. Welcome back to Cherokee Stadium. My name is Les Martin. Of course, it's the end of the end for the seniors. Many players that will be back next year, uh, they will pick up the gauntlet and try once again to make the playoffs. But it's not over for these young men as now they will go, these seniors will go into society and the public and be fine young men. So it's just a stepping stone of where they're going to end up at and where they're going to be. And um, it's tough for a senior to walk off the field for the last time as they're still standing down on the field right now with parents and friends and family as well as teammates and coaches. But with that being said, this end of this season brings on a whole new season. That season of Campbell County High School basketball. Jim Freeman, Matt Moore, they'll have all the coverage for you starting November the 15th. That's on a Tuesday. It's the Hall of Fame game. It is at home against Claiborne County High School. So it's not over for all the Cougars, just the football Cougars. And if it's a good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, and if it does, I'll be in a boat. We'll be back next year here, here on WLAF. So... For everybody who made the trip, all these games, these 10 games, 11 games that we played this season, for all the folks that made it possible, I salute you. So for WLAF, Matt Moore, the producer, my co-host, Mr. Brent Allen, the cameraman, Aaron Evans, and back at home base, Nico Ward, we say thank you to our sponsors, to our fans, and most importantly, to these young players and coaches who sacrificed it all through the summer and through the fall just to get here where they was, went to die. So with that being said, the final score here at McMinn County, McMinn County 39, Campbell County 7. You have been listening to WLF and the Dole's Tire Sports Network.
ever since Cougar football kicked off for the very first time way back in 1975, WLAF has been there. The Cougars are on the air, and this is your front row seat to all the action. Campbell High Sports is a presentation of these outstanding WLAF corporate partners. Hi, this is Rissa at Terry's Pharmacy. We'll follow utilities, LUB. Hi, this is Rhonda Longmire with Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Hi, this is Tabitha Burris. This is Lori Johnson. This is Paige at E.E. Hill Insurance. This is Lansdon Hill with Hill Insurance. Valley Roofing, East Tennessee's leader in roofing and seamless guttering. Hi, this is President Debbie Petrie at TCAT Jacksboro. Tim Smith at TCAT Jacksboro. Go, Go Cougars. Cougars. Citizens Bank, bank your own way. This is Matt Klein with CNL Metal, former Cougar number 42. Hi, this is Brenda Russell with Clayton Holmes Jacksboro. Hey, Campbell County Cougar sports fans, this is former Cougar number 32, Randy Heatherly. Rice Oil, your home for BP. Clarinet, flag corps of the Campbell County Marching Band. Hi, this is Amanda Brown with Cumberland Gap Medical. This is Bailey Ball. I'm back for a fall at my supply. Hi, this is Rayma Darty at United Cumberland Bank, and we love the Cougars! Hi, this is Jerry Porton at the world-famous Charlie's Pizza. This is Tracy Lobertini at Alco Builders and Realty in La Follette. Hello, it's Larry Burge at Burge Screen Printing. Go Cougars! And Lace Your Pearls is just for... Girls, of course, Jim. This is Brian. Carrie. Beth. Come, Come see us, us at First National Bank. Bank. Hey, this is Melinda at Powell Clinch Utilities. Go Cougars! This is Brian Leach with Grace Rehab. Hey, this is Hunter Huckabee. Come see my dad at Dole's Tire Shop. This is Mark Kane with the Follett Medical Center. This is David Reynolds, President of People's Bank of the South. This is Campbell County High School Head Football Coach Justin Price. Listen to them. Watch them. Follow them. The Cougars. Your home of the Campbell Cougars. This is WLAF.